Welcome back to my stupid ideas. Ancient flavor part two, where the group, haha, the group is off to the tomb of the old spice lord Zemaze, who, as Infus pointed out, seems far more personable than the lord of rotten ruin. And um, they are, as pointed out, trying to make a big old pot of stew. Everybody, introduce your characters. Again. Because it's fun for me. <laughs> Big Bird. <laughs> Please don't sue us. Right. You'd be so sure. So oh, sure. You know, as and all best bands wants to do. Yes, and trapped your party in a tomb by pushing a mm -hmm. large boulder off a cliff. I'm sure that won't be a problem. <laughs> All right, oh, no. everyone should be able to hear me now. Thank you, Red Sage, for letting me know. Um, yeah, uh, OBS just forgets my microphone exists sometimes. I don't Fun. know why. It just it hates it. It just goes no, so, never, never heard of him. So we all seem like crazy people talking yeah. to a person no one could yell. So to introduce myself I mean, I again, I'm Russell. I'm a big yes. bird, but not that big bird. And I'm a monk, and I've sold my soul to the devil. That's me done. Who's next? I will go. I am uh, Alderic Wolf. I am an Asimov Paladin who was a grandfather. And I'm here because barbecue sounds like something very delicious. As a large bird, I'm serving two well. minds on barbecue. <laughs> Look, as long as you're not <laughs> dead and plucked, no one's going to want to cook you. Breeder, why do you always talk about cooking me? <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, I'm I'm playing Frida, who is uh, the head of the Hieleman household, and uh, she is a, um, a a cook by trade. Mm -hmm. Although she's she's kind of a, a retired cook at this point. She mostly does uh, dinner parties and uh, bake offs and things like that. Uh, and, uh, she's here to partake in some some fine dandy cooking. She's been in this tomb before. She's the only one of these people that have been in this tomb, though. Definitely not this far. Not yeah, not this part of the tomb. No. Mm-hmm. She'll cook what? anything. Yep. <laughs> anything. That's something that I have a problem with. What? Do, do you not like chicken wings? She'll cook anything and anyone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, she won't cook people who don't want to be cooked. And she won't cook something alive. That is not good cooking practice. Right, but if I'm dead, I can't say I don't want to be cooked. If you have previously said you don't want to be cooked, she will honor that. I don't want to be cooked. I'm saying this now, okay? Okay, that is good to know, Nick. Thank you, Nick, for telling me that. No, no. <laughs> Frida is suddenly the subject of modified memory, and all she can remember is Russell saying, Cook me, please. <laughs> <laughs> Tanwin, yeah. you're up. Well, Yukida, I'm Tenwin. I'm not from around here, but I'm a normal tiefling tourist. Uh, this barbecue sounded very interesting. I mean, uh, I did a bit of business on the side with um, some of the people here. You know, some of the people here, but um, that's neither here nor there. I try to stay out of the, the office, otherwise. Don't want my boss thinking, uh, expecting me to work on my uh, time off. But still, I'm here, and this all sounds very fun. Okay. Would anyone like to do a recap for inspiration? And if somebody does it in a singing voice, I'll give you a bardic inspiration. <laughs> very tempting, but I we don't do have a bard, Frida. Really a singing bard? She's more of a storytelling bard. Um. <laughs> Though she is the one person in the party who can't get bardic inspiration. Let me think, what what did happen last time? I, if I look at the map, that'll probably remind me best. Uh, what did we do? We got trapped because a boulder fell down for some reason. Oh, yeah. Oh, fell down for some reason. Did it? For yeah, so some reason. Yeah. We, we yeah, got passive this, voice, this place. Uh, passive voice. The, the boulder was caused to fall. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> some broken like a politician. Something caused the boulder to fall. We won't dwell on it. 
There was a weird druid up there that was probably going to push the boulder down anyway, but somehow the boulder yeah. fell on its own onto the druid after he fell down like a good hundred feet or so. I, um, I need to stress, that druid. druid just fell straight off of there. I did not push the druid. I did push the boulder. Nobody Wait, no. can see what happened, so we've only got Russell's word to go by on this We one, don't so. know what happened to the boulder either. <laughs> <laughs> Russell was up there for a while after the druid fell down. Now it's Hamway he... feels a little ripped off because maybe she'd have got that, uh, maybe, um, you know, Russell's soul was headed to a certain place anyway. Wow, yeah. Russell is a priest. <laughs> and yeah. priests are hmm. notoriously fine, just great, great people. There's no scandal or history of priests being problems. Okay. Not at all. I'm not, is, um, is that the case? I'm not hearing a recap. Nick? <laughs> we're sort of we're getting there. We dropped a boulder. <laughs> we are it trying to in. Doing it. Uh, no, we no, no, no. Hold on. I, I was saying I'm not hearing a recap, so I can just do one and give myself inspiration. We we have to make this soup. You can do it. We have to make soup to keep going through the, the to to open the door to the room actually that we're currently in. Um, so like we we had. We, we, we basically broke into this room, despite we, Freeman yeah. saying we shouldn't do that. And we beat our meat. Uh, yeah, so uh, there was a cellar full of meat that we, then attacked us. And we punched but, it. Yeah. Tanwen used her psychic abilities and uh, resoundly avoided a lot of the complications that would have come with that battle. Yeah, we that meat was bad. We also found some booze. Oh yeah, yeah we found booze. That was great. Hey, I how liked did you that drink bit. with your friends? Three yeah. cans of booze, only two of which were identified. Uh, we got yeah, to go. We were fairly sure that one of them was bad, right? So we didn't open the the third one. Yeah. No, no. Well, not bad, just very strong. Oh well, let's let's go go the hell back. <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait. Russell wants a <laughs> drink. One of the reasons we went into this dining room, I think, was because we wanted a short rest. Right? Yeah, we did. I'm out of key. Yeah. No. <laughs> I, could, I could really we used do one that. outside the dungeon for some reason that no one's aware of. Yeah, no one knows what that was about. <laughs> it wasn't related to the boulder at all, I promise. <laughs> A damn but, boulder uh, just fell down. Really weird. Yeah, I, um, could, so I could definitely do with... Uh, a short rest and get some key do, back. Do any of us not have inspiration? I think everyone's got inspiration, right? I think we've all got it, yeah. Uh, I I did do a small sing-song part. Do I get that bardic inspiration? <laughs> I didn't hear it, but sure. <laughs> ha ha! I definitely heard it. Lies. Yeah. I'm, I, okay. I always hear sing. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh no, wait, that's winter. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh. You know, everyone, I think this is a great place to rest for about one hour. I'm pooped. I don't know mm, about you lot. That's a really good idea, Russell. Yes. Um, I had to go really fast yeah. when I was out flying that boulder. You were what? Sorry? <sighs> oh, the boulder. Was it was falling down, so I had to get in. Otherwise, we'd be trapped, right? Oh, yes. You did come down very fast then, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. Wait. We would still be trapped if it fell down. Yeah, but I had to be in there. Otherwise, I'd be stuck outside. Right. It's just as well we got in before it it fell, and that Russell took care of that druid that was going to try and um, trap us with it anyway. Um, so, oh, it, yeah, took care of the druid. Sure, <laughs> I'm sure nature will take its course on them. That's fine. Nothing to worry about. So, don't have any ideas on how to get out? Oh, we'll find a way. I'm sure. Yeah, I, these places always have more than one entrance. Us dwarfs discovered this when we had our cave-in incident all these years back. There is always a second way out. Yeah, it'd be silly not to, otherwise you'd get trapped, wouldn't you? Yep, I've spoken to a lot of people who've been interred in cribs, and they always have an exit built. It's just good at engineering practice, apparently. And anyway, I'm going to put my feet up on the table, and you can see his like, nasty claws scratching at the wood. And I'm going to get a nap. We, we may be in an abandoned tomb, but please do have some manners. While we're resting in here, um, Frida's going to have a, a wee <laughs> kind of look around. There's there's a book here she'd like to uh, check out. 
that Wait, was that one shoot? of the poems. Did we read it, this one? To refresh, yes, at the very end. This dining room is here for you and all your friends. Come take a rest, enjoy a meal before this adventure ends. Okay. It's good we, we did that. Door Just before the adventure right ends. Here. Does this mean okay. that we're supposed to have a meal in here? Now or later? So, can I ask what this is? That's attached That's to you, isn't your it? That's bag. the thing you picked up. Oh. oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Frida also has one. I Frida has that things. potion that she didn't tell anyone what they did. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, which one of these kegs is the Ignova one? Because I still have it with me. Uh, oh, well, I thought you had dropped it in the spice room when you opened the secret door. So, you, here you it is. bought it in here. There you go. There we go. Oh, crack it open. Have we got any cups around here, or have I just got to use my beak? Wait, what are you sleeping just a moment ago? <laughs> hey, the moment I hear boo booze, it's like when you when you open a, like a a cat food pouch. Like the moment you do it, doesn't matter what state the cat was in, the cat's there, ready. Mm, we should all uh, have a mess kit in our inv inventories from the basic gear. Oh, oh yeah, nice. Right. Me mess kit gears. Oh, I'm gonna use this crowbar. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, uh, what was the effect of this booze in this barrel? Um, I do. If you worship Ignova. Oh, sorry. Would you like to say it in character? Uh, I'm looking for because I think you vaulted down, didn't you? Well, if you worship Ignova, it allows you to add one d4 damage to all attacks for a de undetermined amount of time. Drinking too much may have side effects. Well, let's get drinking too much then. I will leave look, this look, to look, you, look, uh, look. Ignova worshippers, I think. I drink out of it like a um, flamingo drinks. So I'm on one leg <laughs> and I dip my head down and I get my beak into oh. it and then I lift it up and I... Like a drinking it. bird. Yeah, yeah I like that. Music, yeah. Like a dippy bird, yeah. <laughs> Alan is going to look slightly <laughs> voidly at um, Wassel. <laughs> Appropriately <laughs> enough, I <laughs> think those birds do actually work because they've got alcohol in them. It sort of evaporates <laughs> and it's... <laughs> and the difference in uh, pressure causes them to tilt back again. <laughs> so Russell, <laughs> Russell worships Ignova then? Nope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh no. I he just he likes to drink. He gets no benefit. He worships Petrico. Right. That's, that's his... Yeah. Uh, Aragorn has going to pull out a no mug. Her and, character sheet. Sorry. Uh, Aragorn is going to pull out a mug and um, blood up, and then let's take a nice drink. Mm. Well, if Tamron worships Ignova, genuinely, and well, we'll be able to get the same benefit. Well, as I, even though I worship Ignova, I think I'll uh, opt out for the minute. Feels like I should stay sober, you know. Mm. She's clearly lying. <laughs> Why about which part? You're on holiday, aren't you, Taurus? Come on, have a drink. Oh, well, that's true. I should. Always, I guess I should put a bit of soul into this. Yeah. Don't know why you said it like that, that and then winked at me. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't want people thinking I'm chicken now. <laughs> wow. No. To be clear. Wow. 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 Monk music I stops. That monk. <laughs> and she gives you a playful now, punch on the wing. <laughs> now, in universe, is Tanwin like some kind of devil pretending to be a tiefling? Maybe. Wouldn't you like to know, Boyo? <laughs> Maybe. Everyone's having I'm going to assume, yes. I wouldn't want to be a party pooper now, would I? So Frida will have a have a mug as well. I believe only no. one getting a benefit from this. Okay. I oh yeah. Um, Sophia, we did some out of character roleplay because there was something you wanted to do, but we didn't get to it. And you successfully identified the third keg. I just remembered. Would you have brought it into the short rest room? Yes, I would have. Okay. So this. I'd have left the other keg behind because it looked a bit like blood. Yeah. The third keg is, as soon as it comes in the room, like it, the overpowering smell of alcohol turns, and 
y'all get the feeling this may be stronger than any dwarven made ale. Well, well. And that room is not. Yeah. The ca uh, the cork is sparkling, similar to fairy fire. By the way, Tamwin is sat on the table now. Oh, the children. Why? Why? Someone needs to teach you all some manners. I'm older than you, Frida. That doesn't mean you're not a child. Hey, I'm closer to death than you are. <laughs> you're clearly an adult. Alright. Eldritch, okay, so what, what do we know about this um, booze? Uh, I can't fully remember what you told me about a blue so I'll work away, explain okay. it, and let God talk through his mouth. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Pixie cider, served by the teaspoon. This surprisingly potent drink leaves the drinker seeing stars and pixie dust trails behind all other creatures for 1d4 hours. The keg smells like incredibly strong alcohol. You get the feeling that drinking even a moderate amount of this may cause trouble for the hardiest dwarves. The cork is sparkling slightly. I pulled the cork off. Well, your nose burns. <laughs> How much did you just drink, Russell? Uh, let's see. A beak I don't think contains that much liquid, although it is a large beak. Uh, let's say about two tablespoons. He can't stop. His head mm. just keeps on bobbing up and down. Probably about a shot. <laughs> Probably about a shot. Okay. There uh, are several teaspoons in a shot, I'm sorry to say. There are. A shot is about now 25 or ass. 50 mil, uh, and a teaspoon is 15, so there's definitely several teaspoons. You just drank essentially, uh, I'm going to say 10 mugs of ale. Oh, that's fine. I'm a drunken master. That's, that's what we do. You know... <laughs> Yeah. Uh, it, if this if this alcohol is made by the Fae, uh, was is about to be on his way to meet the entertainment. You know, <laughs> that'd be I, funny. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Um, um, uh, Tanwin, what is it you think you do here? What do you mean? Also, I don't do anything here. I didn't work. I'm on holiday. I'm not working. No, I mean, you I mean, keep talking about that you do the... your... You keep talking... You say you're on holiday, and... Uh, when you're on holiday, you shouldn't be working, and you kind of chastise yourself for working when you're on holiday, you know what I mean? What bit of what you were doing today was working? <laughs> well, you know, I sometimes help broker deals and we made a bit of a deal earlier. <laughs> oh, I get it. <laughs> you... <laughs> oh. Uh, you... You must work... I've heard of... It. You work in... <laughs> you work at... Is it called Sigil or Sigil? <laughs> oh no, I have got the. Hiccups. I don't think my boss is actually allowed there. I uh, can someone make me jump? <laughs> I'm assuming Discord is swallowing all the fake hiccups I'm doing, which is a real shame. No, we're, we're hearing. Them. Oh, no, oh they're coming through. Oh, excellent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah they're coming through. Russell, why uh, do you want to jump? Tassel, I use suddenly uses formatology to just make her eyes blaze and make enhance her voice and say, "Does this help?" Was that meant to be scary? Only I've got to say, your accent is the least intimidating thing I've ever heard. Mm. Well, yes, I get I that a lot. Idea. Although uh, it is technically an infernal accent, which just puts some people <laughs> off. Also, Nick, out of character, I got some fun rules for being drunk that I thought I might apply in case someone drank the pixie cider <laughs> and you drank oh, no. a very large amount of it. You have, well, for the good news is you have five temporary hit points per level. Oh, nice. A level. So I'm level four. That's, so that's, the, ba that's the good news. HP. The bad that's news. The, good news. <laughs> the bad news is. You have disadvantage on all non-strength ability checks and saving throws. Oh, damn. Ooh. 
Oof. Advantage all ability checks and saving. Uh, three now. I think when Wes has said he wants to zomp, he, he means to be scared. Uh, to uh, scare the hiccups away. You'll be fine. Why don't you just have a little rest and uh, may maybe have a nap, sleep it off. And... No, I don't need a rest. I'm ready to go. Well, let's go. Run, follow me. Boom, into the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. No, that's not all right. This way. <laughs> Russell, sit down. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> I'm going to sit down now. There is a door in the room right here, which you would all see. And Nick kind of accidentally went through the wall, so he knows what's back there. I ain't seen nothing, I say, looking directly at it. Go through there in a minute. We I just ain't a snitch. Need to, we need to rest Fair for enough. a little bit and um, get uh, some of us back to our senses, okay? <laughs> so let's just um, let's take a moment <laughs> and Frida will um, sing a, uh, a, a gentle lullaby to uh, lull Russell down to rest. <laughs> this will be her using her um, song of rest that will give um, extra healing. Uh, what is the effect on that? Hey, Frida, if I die while I'm drunk, don't cook. I won't ever cook you, Russell. I know that's not what you like. Mm. Uh, Alderwick is carrying, so he's going to open his door and just peek inside real quick. Okay. Also, Russell, while you're drunk because of the pixie cider, everyone is glowing as if they're under the effect of fairy fire, including yourself. You're only, only you're saying this, by the way. You're all very pretty. Oh, thank you. Nice of you to say. You're quite attractive yourself. And then he throws up on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Uh, I believe this is how birds eat anyway. Still, uh, I have to rescind what I just said. You've seen me eat. Why would you think that it would involve being sick? Oh, hmm. Uh, maybe this is how you eat, would eat normally. I don't know. I believe this is how birds feed their young. Although I can't imagine uh, Russell being responsible for any children. Uh, there's Bensendale. <laughs> right, so anyway, my song of rest will give anyone that um, rolls hit die an extra d6 of healing. Okay, I'm going to bed. Thanks, Grandpa Paladin. You're welcome. <laughs> This is when I discover each bed is a mimic. <laughs> oh, no. Who would do that? Who, who would do that? Who would do that? <laughs> yeah, who would do that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, who would theme an entire quest around uh, gathering food items? Absurd. <laughs> Blue would never do that. Blue, Blue wouldn't do that since he get revenge. I mean, at this point, it'd just be unoriginal. <laughs> By the way, um, I rolled the d4 to see how long you're drunk from the Pixie Seder. Nice. Four hours. Nice. I mean, that's essentially going to be the whole of this quest. Uh, I'm going to well, have four Alderwick. short yeah. rests. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because Alduk is very careless. He's going to look in his chest before going to sleep. Hmm. You open the chest and it attacks you because it's a mi no. <laughs> uh, you open the chest. It's full of cobwebs and dust, and there's a small pouch. It looks like it's got a few glass vials and it's stopped with corks and a strap on it that looks like you could, you know, strap it to a limb or something. What you have found is a Heward's handy spice pouch. Oh, nice! It is mine now. Uh, Tassel's going to look at the uh, desk and chair. All right. Uh, Tan went rather not Tassel. Yeah. Tattle shows up out of nowhere. <laughs> suddenly <laughs> off the boat. Like, oh shit, there's giant doors under the water. Okay, on the desk is just a set of playing cards, a uh, bunch of books. Would you like to roll me and check to see what you find? Uh, yeah, what do you want? Uh, taking your time or just looking? Um... We've got like an hour for the rest, so... Yeah, I guess I'm just sort of giving it a good look over. 
Okay, if you're given a thorough check, then investigation. Okay, plus one go. Eleven. Eleven. Okay, for an eleven, you find uh, a few scraps of uh, old worn scrolls. Not the spell scrolls. Uh, if you open them and read them, it seems to be a log from one of the uh, elven servants of Lord Zemaze. The final meal with Zemaze was bittersweet. The food, as always, was excellent. The Lord certainly knew how to cook. As per his final wishes, we've made our home in this tomb. It's not the worst setup. It's a pleasant place to stay. The preservation magic and gardens ensure an indefinite food supply. It's eerie to think of this place as a tomb now. What used to be a kitchen and place to share a meal on your travels is now simply a mushroom farm and the resting place of the kind man who saved us from poverty. Hey, no wonder I haven't met this person. What I'm like a wealthy man. It's like a very pleasant chap. Um, Frida will um, uh, look through these books on this shelf, um, hoping to see if she can find any like recipe books or anything like that. All right. You find a book called To Serve Monster, Unlocking the Magical Secrets of uh, Magical Meat. Oh, boy. Does it have any dust on the cover? Oops, screwing a word. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Everything in this room is covered in a fine layer of dust and cobwebs. And we puss away the dust to reveal how to cook wassail. <laughs> <laughs> No! Blow the way a bit more dust and it says how to cook monsters for Russell. <laughs> <laughs> Russell's coming out of this quest of vegetarian by the end of everything. That's not what he's coming out of this quest I... as. <laughs> Good point. I assume Russell's unconscious right now. He's having a nap. Yeah, he's he's honk shooing away. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I just thoroughly described the side effects of the Infernal Absinthe at Tanwin didn't see fit to share any of them. So you do not have a pleasant rest. You have nightmares. That's up to you to describe oh, what they are. Russell oh no. Russell is having a nightmare and you can sort of you can see him fidget on the bed and he's sort of he's sweating a bit, which is weird because birds don't sweat. But um he, and he's fidgeting, he's going, no, uh, no, no, keep her away from me. Oh, God, no, keep her, no, I don't want to kiss you. And then sits up bolt upright, like hyperventilating. Sorry, I was dreaming about that weird girl that keeps following me. What? Which one? What weird girl? I think her name's Rusty. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I don't I mean, she doesn't use it very often. Is. She just, I don't know, she thinks like I'm her boyfriend, but I'm not interested at all. Maybe you should say something to her, Russell. I have. So many times. I'm sure she she just likes you as a person because you're such a, a wonderful friend. Oh, hey, my hiccups are gone now. If, I don't think, I don't feel drunk at all. He steps and then falls over straight away out of bed. <laughs> well, since you're a priest, uh, perhaps you remember nope. the fable of, of uh, Pippi Le Pew? I'm getting back in a bed. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Go on, Tanwin. Uh, roll me a d20, just a flat d20. Um, this is a luck check to see if you get the uh, main benefit of the pixie cider. 19. Yeah, you do. You have advantage on your attacks because everything is fairy fired from your perspective. <laughs> ah, yes. but disadvantage on everything else. You know what? I'll take it. I take I'll take it. I think I can handle that. <laughs> Giving a monk advantage on all attacks. <laughs> oh, a dumb idea. Be, I know. But beautiful. I'm not look, I, I I put these alcohols in here just to add the funny effects. I wasn't sure who was going to drink any of it, but I'm not just going to say no just because you're a monk. Hmm. Um, by the, the way, uh, by the way, because I don't remember, what was the Ignova effects again? One d four radiant damage to all attacks, melee attacks. Man, I have so much radiant damage. Yep. I guess you could say you're radiant active. Radiant active. <laughs> oh my god. 
I gotta say, it's very odd that they'd have a bedroom right next to the dining room. I've never seen a uh, a, a home with such construction before. You never well, lived in a studio apartment? Yeah, I mean, you ever gone to a tavern? Like, that's... Yes, but it's a... This isn't a tavern or a studio apartment or such. What an what, odd tomb this is. Who lives in a dungeon, like... Well, to be fair, this isn't really a dungeon. Yeah, but, like, who lives in a hole underground? Like, no one does that. No, I, Quite a few halflings do. Many people do that. Halflings? As do dwarves? Gnomes, dwarves? Uh, Frida doesn't. I used to. Uh, Back in the days when Aegis and I met, this um, our, our home in the mountains. You met underground? Some... Oh. A cave is... A cave in the mountains is effectively underground, yes. What were you both doing in a cave? Well, we, we helped with the, the mountain mining and all of that, and... That's that's where we experienced the cave-in and why we eventually left the mountains and ended Wait, up in Airedale. You used to be a miner. Well, my my, my guild were a a mining guild. I thought you I, were a rider. No, I well, <laughs> I I have partaken in writing for the guild as well as the cooking, which was my main duties. And Aegis was the armorer for the guild, who provided all of the gear for the miners, but uh, yes, like most uh, dwarven clans, there was uh, there was mining in our in our histories. That makes sense. That Aegis was the armor. Uh, Aegis has very big armor. Yes, he does, doesn't <laughs> he? Hey, where did you grow up anyway, Russell? Uh, here. Well, not here. Edel. I remember him when he was just a just a wee chick. He had a yeah. very pretty shell. I I don't know, just here. Yeah. Fair mm. enough. I remember being small and thinking Claytus was going to eat me. <laughs> but now I, it turns out I have to worry about someone else doing that. Isn't that right, Frida? <laughs> oh, you think there's, there's, there's plenty of people out there that would love to eat an Aracoca, I'm sure. What? Fear not. I, I'm pretty. I know from experience that people who eat other sentient beings do tend to pay for it in the end. How do you know from experience? Oh, it comes up in my day job. What is your day job? I told you, I work in an office. You work in an off that deals Maybe with cannibals. No, I'm a supervisor, not for cannibals, for people uh, who file paperwork, sometimes involving cannibals. What kind of paperwork do you need to file involving cannibals? Like a recipe book? What? No. You know, a condemnation of their crimes. Oh, you're a cop. Oh, what? it makes no. so much more sense. <laughs> well, I suppose you could say that, yes. I uh, am a lawful sort. Yeah, like you do, like do deals, rules, like plea it, deals, right? Yeah. You're, you're a judge or yep. something. I get it now. Yep. Why didn't you just say? A, we know what judges I are. And, yep, I do help enforce laws. Yeah, okay. Well, that's easy then. Oh, right. That makes so much... Okay. I help people broker dealers, track those, track down those who I try to wriggle out of them. Right, you're a lawyer. Yeah, okay. Right, right. <laughs> when, where yeah. are you? From dear. So, oh, oh, you know, uh, I grew up under, I grew up underground myself. In fact, really, was it was it far from Airedale? A fair distance. Did everyone here grow up underground? Am I the only one who didn't? Uh, no, I grew up in a small village, um, out west. I'm pretty sure. Oh, okay. Well, that's all right then. As long as it's not just me, I'd start to feel like I was weird for growing up in the sky. Not in the sky, but like with the sky above me, you know? I mean, <laughs> as you know, all of my children were born above ground and all uh, grew up in Airedale. 
Yeah. Do you reckon that negatively impacted Hank? Hank has always been a, um, a free spirit. Sort. Yeah, I like yeah. Hank. I think I do wish he'd settle he down at some point. I, I would one day love to have some grandchildren, but uh, all of them are they're all uh, off on their own adventures, I suppose. I'm quite surprised you don't have any grandchildren at all by this point. Yes, me too. Uh, by the way, can I quickly say, out of character, I like the idea that Hal is just a nine to five office job. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. one of my favourite tropes. Just the, like the idea that uh, in hell it's just like a really annoying day job for the devils. Well, that's what Imp is doing. Yeah, there was an ad there was an Adult Swim show with that premise. It was called "Your Pretty Face Is Going to Hell." Yep, it's really? actually quite a few different yeah. uh, works of fiction that take that view. The one I'm thinking mm -hmm. of is mostly is Discworld. Yeah, that is where I steal most of my things from. I need to read more Discworld. No, don't. You'll work yeah. out what I've sold. Nick's ideas. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you are so subtle about it all, Nick. <laughs> you know what? Has anyone seen The Hogfather lately? No. Yeah. No. Uh, when you say no, scene, do you mean like the, um, the adaptation of it? Because I still need to watch that at some point. That was good. Yeah. Anyway, I feel like I've you done a, an hour's worth of sleeping now. Should we keep going? I'm probably good to go. I'm I'm good to go. But I, I was thinking about something. Um, have any of us seen any bodies yet? Because there are a lot of implied people used to live here. It's a good point. Well, we did see the corpse of the Lord himself on the way in, in the open sarcophagus. I would imagine that after he passed, that his staff would have um, gone on to um, live and work elsewhere. Maybe they were buried uh, with him. Uh, this scroll I found suggested they continue to live here. Oh. Ben, what does your song of rest do? Uh, an extra d6 on the healing if you roll nice. a hit die. Nice. Sweet. Gain nine hit points. Oh, that puts me to max. Nice. Plus your 20 temp HP on top. Yeah, as you drunk off your ass. I have forty nine hit points and an advantage on all attacks. I'm ready to wreck this dungeon. <laughs> now I hate to tell you this, because you have disadvantage on literally everything else. I don't think you can automatically see the traps anymore. Uh, probably not. Disadvantage would um subtract five from my passive perception, so my passive perception is now ten. Yep. I think things might go a bit. I oh, have fun with that. But Russell, fine, we'll be fine. That's okay. right. Someone we, else can um, do the perception. <laughs> um, I, I do recall that there was a um, a passageway behind where we found this alcohol, wasn't there? Um, shall uh, we there was. Maybe explore where that went. Oh yeah, good idea. Sounds like a good idea. But bump. I will go Zip. over there now. We. We. I think it has something to do with mushrooms. Is anyone good mm. at seeing only ever? I'm seeing like double of everything. I mean, I could try, but I feel like I'm going to miss all the traps, you know? What's the cavern of stairs down now? <laughs> oh, no, not stairs. Ah! <laughs> 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 no, In my passive perception is only 13, so it's not much right. better than Russell's. I will simply glide down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my passive you go perception down the is 8. Fun. Uh, mine's Fun. All right, so Tandem, dear, maybe you go first. Hey. Okay. Can I make a perception check to look for traps? You can. Uh, is that music? I'm scared now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm hearing this in game. <laughs> the mushrooms are singing. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's a ten. You don't. You don't see any traps, but what you do see is a lot of glowing purple mushrooms. Well, Ugh. I don't see any traps, but I see a lot of uh, glowing um, buckwick. Yes, what they... so what? Like, everything's glowing. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, so these look like do. dangerous mushrooms. Would these be um, poisonous or um, noxious mushrooms or anything? 
Well, the scroll Tanwin found mentioned that this was a mushroom farm. So, they're probably safe to assume that they're all yep. edible. Do you reckon these yep. are hallucinogenic? Because if they are... Russell, do remember Woo! your last time you ate a mushroom that you found somewhere random. I almost died. Mm. Uh, I'm just going to step uh, through. Can I go. try and do insight on the mushrooms to see if they can tell me the true name of God? <laughs> oh, no. Sure. <laughs> sure, why not? Okay, Tamwin pulls out her bow and draws it and points it in the mushroom. <laughs> Thank you. you go down the stairs. Oh, sorry, wrong dice there. And it's fine. The small, the pathway lit by small luminous mushrooms. The clusters of mushrooms go taller and denser as you descend. As you advance, it natural one. Yep, Tamwin's crying. I'm not afraid of you. Yep. <laughs> As you advance, it becomes harder and harder to see the bare stone of the floor as it's completely covered by fungi. Glowing spores float all around you as you move. They sway lazily in the air. The stairs lead down into a ten-foot-wide archway that opens into a wide room. It looks like it was once set up to possibly grow and harvest mushrooms, but something appears to have gone horribly wrong. Um, does it appear that these spores might be toxic? Hmm, probably a nature check. Hey, what's Tam when we're doing? Okay, just a plus one. I see how it is. I'm just playing a druid now. <laughs> 18. Okay, yeah, for that. These kind of mushrooms are edible. The spores on their own wouldn't cause any problems. You could probably even harvest the spores for seasoning. Uh, we need well, I think, um, mush- I think these mushrooms are edible. In fact, the spores would make quite a nice seasoning. Oh, Add the yes. umami flavor to a soup. Um, was was mushrooms on the list for the recipe? I forget what was on it. Yeah, mushrooms yep. were on the list. <laughs> okay, well, let me go in. And um, Frida will try and uh, harvest some mushrooms. Okay. Um, Tan, when we'll look out just in case there's something hardy in the mushrooms. Russell's going to put a okay. shaky wing on Eldrick's shoulder and say, Grandpa, be, be careful, all right? Because you're my best friend in the whole world. <laughs> and last time I went on an adventure with my best friend, they died. So be well, careful. I'll try not to die. I miss Cedric well, so your best much. Friend and I miss when you Cedric. Went on the- Oh, I was going to just start close. crying and walking straight on it. <laughs> Cedric you said you died. <laughs> oh, yes. Stuck in the abyss. Nasty business, that. A business. <laughs> and Cedric is definitely still stuck in the abyss. <laughs> Why on earth would Cedric be in the abyss? What a strange place to end up. He's, he's gone with the demons instead of devils. Yep. So you sometimes sometimes people can get bound to the abyss. Nasty business, really. <laughs> just wander anywhere and find some strange cursed item. Well, uh, Russell, aren't you also suffering from that same fate? What do you mean, Cedric is just. <laughs> Cedric was a wizard. He got me- his face melted off. I I heard that you were also present when the soul binding was <laughs> enacted. I'm sure that'll be fine. Cause what? <laughs> so just Tamlin wanted to see if there was anything hiding in the room. Yep. Oh, uh, after hearing this conversation, Tamwin's but Ace is going to fall, and she just mutters, "Well, okay, this might cause some paperwork and a few um." Discussions. You can have to put mm. a transfer request in. <laughs> roll me a. Uh, and yeah. <laughs> um, and roll me a perception check. Okay. So perception is plus four. Thirty twenty. Good enough. 
There are three shapes in the center of the room. <gasps> Two of them are elven. Or rather, they were. <gasps> you can tell from their pale, dry skin and hollow eye sockets that they died long ago. Oh, the their faces are set in a perpetual silent scream. Bright purple mushrooms grow from their shoulders and the crowns of their heads. The other figure, yep. standing in the chamber, is a 15-foot-tall lumbering mass. Its cap is bright purple, the same purple of the mushrooms that you followed down the tunnel. On the top of the cap, long, thin fungi grow in a perfect circle like a crown. From the thick stem, four stumps emerge, two for arms and two for legs. You watch. Has this, uh, has, of, sorry. Has it noticed us? Not just yet. It might be waiting for me to finish the narration. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what, you watch what his, a very friendly mushroom. Yeah. You watch as tendrils of bright purple spores leave the body of one of the elven figures and are absorbed by the wide cap of the plant-like monster. It turns slowly to face you. Cute. And as it moves, bright purple spores fall down from the underside of its cap a horizontal slit in the middle of its stem opens into a mouth filled with sharp, decaying teeth. You have entered the court of the Mushroom King. Hello. Uh, ha hello. It does not look happy. What are you hello. Talking about? It's extremely happy. Hey, look at that face. Hello. hello there. We come in peace. Hello. You know, I I've met a Mykonid once. They're good people. Good people. I see that you have um, assimilated a few humanoids. Nothing <laughs> wrong with that, but um, we just wish to collect a few mushrooms and then we'll be on our way. I, does it appear to have hostile gonna, intentions? They're just going to yes. be best yes, friends. Yes, it does. Let's just go say hello. Hello! Uh, I, what's up? Putting a wing out to <laughs> shake <laughs> hands with the Mykonid. You're my best <laughs> friend. Let's <laughs> have a hug. <laughs> Intercept <laughs> Russell and try and stop him doing this. I'm going straight for it. I will spend key to do so if I need to oh, evade no. you. <laughs> Russell, this is no time to be a fun guy. Oh, what do you mean? Uh -huh. I'm always fun. No, Hello, look, mushroom my, friend. Those, those poor elves have clearly been assimilated by this creature. It is very dangerous. Mush Has it responded in any way? Has it said anything or made any noises towards us? It's letting. It, it's got an evil smile on its face, and it's just got like this fog of spores coming from its mouth, and it's just staring at all of you. I mean, that doesn't mean anything. Plenty of things have evil smiles, and they're pl uh, perfectly pleasant. A mushroom friend. And it's going for. A Melee what attack is your favorite alcoholic drink. Spiked punch as it goes to punch Russell. <gasps> How dare! Alligator just was in this are uh, very confused and very extremely worried. I'm adding you all to doing? initiative. I did yeah, not roll my right. initiative yet. Just Clash, that's the one. Uh, there can Tam when cast um, burning smites? As soon as she, at the first sign of trouble, or will I have to do that in initiative? Oh, I'd say that's initiative. This thing is pretty clearly hostile, and it almost immediately went to punch Russell. Uh, I got an. Oh, eight. I mean, okay. Elder Wolf got an eighteen, and Russell okay. got it. Ten. Yep. Okay, so clicking on the uh, rolling thing, I rolled a nine, but that's not counting my uh, plus four, so. And it's not going to see me change just... it. There you go. 13. Yep, thank you. Temporary hit points. Looks that's like good. Grandpa. Yeah. Yeah, there's a temporary hit point thing. I made sure to enable that. I enabled it during the carnival to track Tattle's wild shape health, but I completely forgot to do that. Oh, hold on. I have disadvantage on all ability checks. Let me roll a second initiative. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's worse. Actually, is it worse? Hmm. My initiative bonus. Plus four? Oh, no. Uh, it's uh, it's still ten, then. Because I, I rolled a seven, plus four is eleven. Um, what is the Mushroom okay. King's um, dex bonus? Because that will affect which of us goes first. Uh, that's a good question. I get a Mushroom King's three. dex bonus is minus one. Okay, so I go first. Okay. 
What about the uh, fungal elf? Oh yeah, fungal elf. Fungal elf dex bonuses too. Okay. Um, mine is plus three, so I should be going before it. There you go. And Frida, 8.1. There you go. Oh, uh, and uh, there's one more thing I need to add to initiative. I just forgot where I put the token for it. So, uh, Grandpa Paladin, you're up first. What you doing? All right, so I'm going to come on over here. And to right. activate the um, Coral Spices, I just put the weapon in the scabbard and pull it back out, right? Well, it's a bonus action. You just say the uh, the command word and or command phrase, and it is spice it up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, it looks like I'm going to have to spice it up. Uh, and, you and, get your, going, and you would know, due to yeah. your research, this thing is vulnerable to fire damage. Yep, and that's the only damage type I can even use at the moment of this thing. Uh, so I will attempt to make an attack with my long sword. Okay. Uh, 13. Only that attack. Uh, 13. 13. 13? Yeah. Okay. One moment. Let's get the combat music going. This is far too peaceful. <laughs> Extremely peaceful. Yeah. Islands. Uh, 13 misses. Islands. Damn. Y your blade kind of gets stuck in the dense flesh of the mushroom monster. Now uh, that was my bonus action, so, um... Yeah. It is now Fungal Elf's turn. Also, Tanwin, you'd notice that that armor you researched is on one of the elves. It looks oddly pristine, given its current surroundings. Well, well, well. The elf is going to walk up to the nearest target and smack it. Let's see. I'm going to use physical dice for this because I never get to use physical dice. Oh, no. Natural one does not hit. So it just kind of lazily smacks at you. Uh, is it attacking me or Russell? It's attacking you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's the nice getting you. the joints. Uh, it, it, it does not respond. Its mouth is just open and leaking spores. Oh, well, I guess you. it appears that you're in... Um, well, can uh, Tamwin tell if it's um, in any way aware of its situation or if it's just like a corpse being piloted? Mm. Roll me a nature check. Or Arcana. Nature? Dealer's choice. Okay. What about insight? Ah, insight too, I guess. Okay. Well, I'll go for insight if you're allowing it, because I... Well, that is my expertise. Sure. Like, I, I'm of the Jack Packard... Yeah. I'm of the Jack Packard School of DMing. If you can justify a roll, go for it. Yeah, 21. So you've heard of certain parasitic organisms that will destroy a host and puppeteer it around. This looks pretty similar to that. You are fairly certain there is nothing left of the elf. Well, nothing left but mold. I guess that the arm is free for the taking then. Yeah. And the elf, as its last action, is going to let out a wild scream as spores fill the air around it. Russell and Tanwen, con saves, please. Oh, oh here we go. Darn it. <laughs> I'm not good at these. Nine. It's a failure. Twelve. Also a failure. Yeah, I'm going to use Let's my inspiration. How... Okay. Oh, no, it's a natural one. <laughs> <laughs> Even worse. Oh, oh no. <laughs> You both take... Oh, that's a bad roll. Take uh, five poison damage. Yeah, okay, that's worse. not too bad. I've still got quite a good. lot of temporary hit points. I was expecting some sort of stasis effect. And you notice some of the spores flow into the Mushroom King. Danwin, your turn. Okay. Well... If this is how it has to be... And she's just going, and she just sort of closes her eyes and focuses a second. Her purple skin suddenly desaturates to a very pale, sort of, um, white. It's basically sort of 
in the normal range of human skin tones, but it's so impossibly pale that it almost looks white. Except it's purple pretty... in the room, so she still looks purple. <laughs> yep. It's pretty glowy <laughs> and magical to me. Yeah, her hair also desaturates, uh, so it uh, goes from uh, black to purple. Every... And her horns basically grow a bit longer and sort of start twisting together. And a pair of fiery wings appear behind her back. And she manifests her sword, which now has um, is which is now wreathed in flame. And this is her, well, as previously established, this is how she casts Searing Smite. And she's going to go for the Mushroom King. Alrighty. It's plus five to hit. Wait, would she be getting a uh, sneak attack damage here? Would she? No, she, no, she wouldn't. Uh, you know what? No. Uh. Isn't sneak attack just if there's someone within five foot of the target? Yeah, you know, I'm gonna risk an attack of opportunity, push past Russell, walk around, and would I get sneak attack from here? No, that would be flanking. Like you get sneak attack okay. anyway, don't you? Yeah, you'd get sneak attack here. I don't know what's going on. Oh, right, okay, yeah. man. Oh yeah, 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 yeah you're right. I do get. Yeah. Okay, but I do get sneak attack. Okay, I'm attacking then. Twenty-two to hit. Now that miss, and now, no, that that is. Wow, wait, what, wait, why is this Pathfinder? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Roll me your damage. Yep. Okay. Do you want me to roll the psychic and fire damage separately? Uh, yes, please. Okay. We'll start with the psychic damage. So that's d6 plus 2d6. So 3d6 plus um, 3. Okay. 17 points of psychic damage. Got it. And from the Searing Smite. Um, as she uh, strikes with the sword, the flame, her flaming wings basically wrap around the Mushroom King. So that's going to be an extra 1d6 fire damage. And at the start of each of its turns, it must make a constitution saving throw. On a failed save, it takes another d6 of fire damage. And okay. on a successful save, the spell ends. It's very good. Yep, so let me just draw that d6 for you. Four points of fire damage. And you'll notice where that uh, fire hit, it's seared to a nice brown and smells delicious. Well, did you smell delicious? What? Not you as well. Gosh, you am Frida. What? Not you, not you, Russell. Everyone the Maddox. Wants to eat the bird. I the Maddox monarch. What? talking about the mushroom person Russell oh my best friend it is not your best friend it just tried to kill you what it no it literally punched you with a horrific it's horrific mushroom fists no no that doesn't sound right I'm imagining it with its hand still placed up in the air just about to swing down on Russell <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> Anyway, yeah, that's yeah. everything from Tanwin. Okay. So, this thing gonna go here and smack at the Grandpa Paladin. Physical dice don't let me down. That is it. 15. I know your AC is currently 20 because I'm an idiot. And that is a 7. Both attacks miss. Russell, the drunken monk. Yeah. Here we go. I'm gonna do what I do best whacking things. Uh, so I'm going to use the returning hand axe to strike at Big Mushroom with advantage. Yep. Uh, that is drunk off your ass. a 24 to hit. I think that hits. <laughs> and that is going to do 11 points of slashing damage. Um, because I have the slasher okay. feet, its movement speed is reduced by 10 feet until the start of my next turn. Oh, fun. Then I'm going to use Flurry of Blows. And I'm going to go and strike at the Fungal Elf to the south of me. With my claws. And that is a 21 to hit. That hits. And that does five points of slashing damage. That one doesn't have its speed reduced. It's only the first one I hit each turn. Got it. Um, then I'm going to step over to here. And slash at this other elf, elf 
And that is okay, a 17 to hit. and taking the opportunity attack in the process. Nope, not taking an opportunity attack in the process. I am a oh, drunken that's master right. monk, that's right. and I just do not get <laughs> attacked if I'm flurrying. Um, so Fair that, enough. Uh, what did I roll there? I think it was 17. 17. Yeah, 17. That, that hits. Okay. So that's another five slashing damage to that one. Okay. 15, 20, 25, 30... 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. Russell? <laughs> I just leave. <laughs> uh, more like nice. Russell. And that's my turn. <laughs> Frida, here go. Frida has just had Russell just go zooming right past her. Um, uh, she will observe that the the two um, elves seem to be um, kind of uh, not um, not not under their own esteem and uh, will look towards the mushroom king. Keep your damn dirty spores off us, you dirty great mushroom! And that is her casting uh, vicious mockery. So that is a um, DC fifteen. Is it uh, a wisdom saving throw? Yeah. And it's a natural one. All right. Nice. So it will have um, disadvantage on its next attack roll, and it takes 1d4 psychic damage. Roll me that damage. Yeah. Four. Four. Not bad. Um, she will also. Um, oh. Who. Who. who um, well, uh, Grandpa's got the the Bardic Inspire already, so she'll look to uh, Tan Wen with her fiery wings and flaming sword. Like, oh, you're in roasting mode, I see. You wonderful, magical girl, you. And that is uh, Bardic Inspiration 1d6 for Tan Wen. I too would be inspired if someone said that to me. <laughs> and uh, Frida Same. will actually take a few steps backwards and uh, take a, a wee peek at this book over here. Um, would she be able to um, have a quick scan of it whilst uh, in her turn, or would that be an action? I think you can read it on your next turn if you want, before you do anything. Sure, we'll do that next turn now. And that is me. Okay. Mushroom King's turn. It has disadvantage on its next attack. Mm -hmm. Lucky tan one. Very lucky tan. The Mushroom King raises its large, big stumps to smack at the definitely not a devil. Oh, cool. That was almost a natural 20. Shame it's only a natural 19. I'm assuming that hits. Natural 19 with disadvantage? Oh, disadvantage. Hold on, sorry. I was going to say. Uh, yeah, that's an 8. Yeah. An 8 does not hit. That misses. No. Wait, hold on. Uh, oh, I forgot to add the plus. My bad. Uh oh. Was a 15 hit? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, okay. Let's roll that damage. I don't feel like rolling in the physical dice. Wait, where's my defense? There. Oh, that's a 15. That was uh, 12 uh, bludgeoning damage sound. Ow. Yeah. It just Ooh, I mean, so crashes cool. crashes down with its big old uh, mushroom hands. And oh, then by it the way, it needs to make a constitution save at the start ah, of this turn. Yes. One con save coming up. Uh, what's the DC? 13. It rolled a natural 15. Ah. It's no longer on fire. It was a good... It was a great idea. So, it shakes its cap and releases a big cloud of spores. I need Eldrick and Tanwin to roll me wisdom saves. I refuse. Don't forget, you both have bardic inspirations if you want it. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, and by the way, uh, something I almost forgot. Uh, it should have been 2d6 fire damage. Oh, okay. Uh, roll me more so, damage. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a uh, another six points of fire damage to it. Uh, I okay. got up. 
I got a 14. Ah, oh, you... Okay, you succeed. Okay. Oh. Wisdom's not too bad. Let's do this. <laughs> Eight. Oh. I was switching to physical bad. dice. Did you, did you use that's your uh, bardic inspiration? Oh. Oh, yeah. What's my body? What's the body? It's 1d6. Okay, 1d6. Shadzik. Uh, okay, and you nine. get one Tragic. temporary hit point as well. Oh, lucky me. So the Mushroom King has released these bright purple spores from its cap, and they flow into Tanwin. And you know what, Tanwin? The Mushroom King is your best friend. Oh, you no. would defend him with your life. Oh, no. Well, I think... I guess Russell was right. This guy seems very pretty cool. See? Hmm. <laughs> well, that's not good. I did not mean okay. to move down. Hey, look at that. Lair action. Lair action? Oh, no. Yeah. Well, let's see, what's going to happen? Else. Oh, I could be real mean right now. Oh, I could be so mean. Do it. Do it. Uh, okay. All the mushrooms in the room begin to shake under the control of the Mushroom King. A s the room is filled with a storm of spores. Huh? Oh, Everyone no. still in the room, which isn't Russell, the Mao. is blind for one round. <laughs> well, not even a save. Oh, jeez. Okay. There's no save listed on this. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, everyone except the fungal elves and as luck would have it, Tanwin. Wait, wait. No, no, all creatures. Okay, even Tanwin. In, and even the fungal elves. Yeah, even the fungal elves. Even the Mushroom King. I'm okay. not sure they need sight. Yeah. Okay. Grandpa Paladin, your go. Well, you know what? It may be disadvantage, but who knows? Maybe it'll go well. Never mind. I'll go fuck myself. You also have body concentration as well, right? Yeah, I do. Uh, ten. Uh, Blue, am I That's legally allowed to ask if I do get a... If I do get... Could the body inspiration and make it a hit him now? You rolled a ten, right? Yes, a ten. What is the... What's the dice? Uh, 1d6 for the body inspiration. You would have to roll max. So theoretically, I'll save it for later. Uh, but what my bonus actions again? Oh, well, right now your bonus action is apply magic spice to your blade, which you have one charge left of now. Uh, no. Uh, because I didn't hit, it is still active. Uh, yeah, that's right. It is still active. You only lose the charge on a hit. Well, you know what? I'm going to be very annoying and make you hate me, and I'm going to use my bonus action to cast Seal of Faith on myself and have 22 AC. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I, I hate you, but good job. <laughs> is that your turn? That is my turn. Good luck hitting me. Yeah. Well, good news for Tanwin. Maybe not so good news for everyone else. Tanwin's under the employee of the Mushroom King, and as such, is not a target. Oh boy. Grandpa Paladin is, though. Okay. Show the fake is a good idea. <laughs> it's gonna probably. Really, it's gonna be really bad if I get mind consult, because, uh, 22 oh, HD. Natural 20. Oh, oh well, that's. That's tragic. Ha <laughs> <laughs> uh... Okay. Psst. Frida, uh, what if question. we just close the door? What if we just close uh, the door, Frida? Question. I've got question. a question, by the way. So Tanwin's charmed by the Mushroom King, but yep. she, is she charmed by the uh, two, other two mushroom zombies or what have you? Uh, no, it doesn't say you're charmed by the mushroom zombies. So well, I've got an attack of opportunity. Will... Hmm, what do y'all think? The Mushroom King employs the two little servants, and now Tanwin for one round. And Tanwin's only main goal is to defend the Mushroom King with her life. 
So I would assume if you can somehow justify them being a threat, yes. I mean, unless it had told her not to attack the other things, then. Well, you see, it is clear that because the, um... I mean... The Mushroom King is a monarch, those mushrooms are clearly anti-monarchs. Yeah, I mean... The charmed condition only cares about the creature and the charmer. Yeah. It doesn't care about anyone else. If they want to not get hit, they also need to charm Tanwin. Yeah. Plus the other two are also very clearly clearly attacking Tanwin's other friend. Okay, well, yeah, then you get uh, your attack of opportunity. Yep, uh, disadvantage, I believe, because of the blindness. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so oh, as wait, it was rushes by... Oh, sorry, continue. Yep, so as it rushes by, Tamwen manifests her sword and says, All right, enough of this from you. The, the king does not need this trouble. And that's a seven that anyway, seven. so this is... It does. Okay, let's well, don't roll you walk that. away from me. Well, blue, real quick. Yeah. Boy, that attack. Did you also roll it at disadvantage? Because they would have a disadvantage too to do being blind. You know, they would have disadvantage if they didn't have blind sight. Ah, fell enough. How dare they? Okay, have let's roll that. Sight. Yeah, let's roll that damage. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that's eleven bludgeoning damage from a crit. Ow. And uh, Fancy One hasn't used its spore scream, so Fancy One's gonna let out a big old scream. Roll me a con save, Eldrick, and then another con save to see if you keep Shield of Faith. Yep. Uh, 18 for the spore scream. You're good. I'm gonna use that inspiration. Wait a minute. Okay. Uh, the inspiration I have from the AOL, by the way. So uh, I'm just going to yep. re-roll that. Uh, 21 for the concentration sec. Okay, you're good. You keep Shield of Faith. Okay, well, that's uh, Bongolov's turn. Tanwin. Okay, so I'm charmed by the Mushroom King. To protect them with your life. Well, I best deal with these troublemakers. Fear not, Majesty. They will be duly punished for their uh, assault on your guests. And with that, she's going to disengage and attack um, this one. Still at a disadvantage. Five. Wait. Yeah, I'm still at disadvantage. The round's not over. Yeah, that's not flanking because it's a melee. Yeah. Okay, disadvantage then. 13. 13. What is their AC? I forget oh, it. The, the oh, the is 25. Oh, meets it, beats it. Meets it, beats it. You get yeah. the hit. I, I've got an ally nearby, so I guess um, sneak attack. Let me just... Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Do. 12 points of psychic damage. Oh, mm, yeah. 12 points of psychic damage. If this thing had a mind left, it probably would have just shrieked in pain, but now he just gets... Uh, uh... <laughs> yep, and I'm gonna move. Do, do, do. That's the end of my turn. Okay. It is uh, other fungal elf's turn. Let's see if that one also gets an at twenty. I hope not. It did not. That was a two. Oh, uh, two is close to twenty-two. And that was a seven. And now I'm going to roll some d6s and see if their screens recharge. One of them gets it back. Russell, here go. All right, I round the corner. I go, oh, what is happening in here? Where did you go? Thank goodness you're back. I was just, I was His just Majesty is in great danger. His Majesty? Oh, no. Who's His Majesty? Do you mean Grandpa Paladin? She's been charmed by the m- Mushroom King. Well, His we Majesty all, the Monarch, we all Monarch. Love the mo- we all love the Mushroom King. Get in there and help the Grandpa. All right, all right. Yes, we must stop these traitors from hurting the Paladin. 20. 
It would not do well if the if the king's guests were harmed. Forty. I'm gonna throw my hand axe at the mushroom king. Oh no. Okay. Russell, now what's you since doing? Russell Now I would like to say, since Russell is obviously being a threat, would Tanwin take the attack of opportunity? No, because she has a conflict of interest. I was saying we all love the Mushroom King as I went past. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that kind of defeats the purpose of defend them with your life, but I'll give you this one. I can roll deception yeah. at disadvantage, fail that, and then... <laughs> yeah. yeah, tell you what, um, if I roll insight against your uh, deception... You've got expertise and insight, that. and I've got disadvantage. You may as well just take the attack of opportunity. <laughs> My roll's been terrible. Just take the attack of opportunity. You're you're going to pass. I mean, you are blind okay. as well. Like you can't see me. Oh so. yeah. Your hey, your you attack of opportunity know. is probably uh, not going to hit. You never know. Hey. Tanwin could get an at one on the inside. I kind of want to. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll destroy the attack. <laughs> as funny as it would be. I'm guessing no. a nine won't hit you. <laughs> no. So I'm zooming past and then throwing the hand axe. That is 21 to hit. That hits. And that's going to be uh, eight points of slashing damage. Mushroom King's okay. speed is again reduced by 10 feet until the start of my next turn. And fine, I'm going to move in and stay in because Grandpa Paladin needs some help. I'm then going to give a claw to this uh, fungal elf with my bonus action. Alrighty. And that is 23 to hit. That hits. And that is 9 points of slashing damage. 9 points of slashing damage? Yep. Okay. So you slash into this thing and the elf starts like bubbling and shaking for a minute and explodes in oh, a yeah. cloud of spores. Grandpa well, Paladin, Russell, regret coming saves. in to help. <laughs> <laughs> That'll teach you. Yeah. <gasps> 15? That's good. I got a 20 and a 13. <laughs> Plus 2. Grandpa Paladin? Hello. Con save. Oh, I right, Uh That is never 18. Ooh. Okay, you're both good, so you only take half of this damage. Which is half of nine. Four. So you both take four damage. As the fungal elf explodes violently. Still got 11 temporary hit points. <laughs> Man, those sure were some fun drunk rules I found. <laughs> you went past two levels of drunk straight to the third one. Yep. Never do anything by halves. That is my turn, Dumb. Okay. Frida, Frida. will... <clears throat> she'll take a quick peek at this book. Um, what does it say? Welcome to the Mushroom Farm. We hope you like the place. If you need help, feel free to ask my elves, Mary and Ace. Okay, that's useless. Um... Yeah, it's almost like <clears throat> this used to be a nice farm until something went horribly wrong. <laughs> Um, so Frida is currently blinded, so she... Somehow read a book while blind. <laughs> well, I guess she could, like, get her face right up to it, right? <laughs> yeah, mean, fair enough. He's a nice guy. He probably um, included Braille. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, he included Braille. Um, so she can't do Vicious Mockery right now. Um, what she can do... Uh, this thing is proving a bit of a pain. Uh, so she is... She's going to take it seriously, and she's going to cast Shatter. Oh, boy. And, uh, yeah, she'll, she'll cast it, like, in a way so that it doesn't um, get um, Eldrick and uh, Russell in the radius. Woohoo! That is a DC 15 con save. I'm assuming the Mushroom King probably has good con. You would Mushroom. assume correctly. You would assume very correctly. But he rolled it too, so it doesn't matter. Ooh, okay. <laughs> That's 3d8 under damage. 
go. Oh, it's not great. 11. 11 thunder damage. Okay. There you go. Um, and then she'll she'll call out to um, to Eldrick. That's it, old man. You keep them busy. And that is Bardic Inspo for Eldrick. That is 1d6. Yay. And is the Mushroom King's go. And he had my control right muscle. That would be bad. That reminds me. I need to roll and see if that recharges. It doesn't. You're right, it doesn't. <laughs> oh, aren't you lucky? Very. Yes. He's got a fun a bunch of fun tricks in his cap. I mean, let's see. Mushroom King is going to take two smacks at the people right next to him. That is a 19 to hit the paladin, which does not hit the paladin. Uh, by the way, as a reaction, I use protection for Russell. Okay. So that's disadvantage on the attack then? Best yes. friend. You got... You went from a natural 17 to a natural 5, so both attacks miss. That's great, because 17 is my AC. That would have hit. <laughs> yep. Not to mention the plus bonus. Lair action time. Oh, no. Yep. Isn't that fun? Yep. Oh, I should have uh, stepped out of the room. I'm just happy knowing it can't yeah, be the same one as the last time. Yeah. God, what, what if we all get mind controlled? Wouldn't that be funny? That would be fine. <laughs> yeah, Frida, why didn't you just leave the room? The door is right about, there. I'd, I'd, I'd planned to and then forgot the plan. So, <laughs> same. Ten tendrils of purple spores lift from all the mushrooms in the room and flow into the mushroom king, and you'll notice him heal up a fair bit. Oh no! Yeah. Well, that could be worse. Oh, I'm so relieved. Is the blindingness um, finished? Yeah, blind's gone. You can cool. all see again. I'm just looking for D8. You know, if I can look for it now, there. Is this how much healing it gets? Yeah. <laughs> if Tannen was still under control, shot. she would have got the uh, healing too. She is, isn't she? Am I not under control anymore? It's not been Tannen's go yet. Well, oh, I guess you get 13 healing. Oh, nice. it like, the layer action heals everything under its control at the time, so. Um, Heck yeah. I'm back to lethal hit points dude, again. Dude. Very nice. It's a shame the other uh, bungle elf fucking died. Yeah, real shame. Yep. Is that it? Eldrick's go now? Yeah, it's Eldrick's go. Oh boy, here I go again. Uh I'm no longer blind, right? Because you said it was just for a round? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The blindness is gone. All right. Uh, once again, I start to attack. I am going to start to use that Bardic Inspiration. It's a 1d6, right? Yep. Yep. Uh, does a 16 hit? Does a 16 hit? Yes. Yes, it does. Excellent. Okay, so that will be... Okay, so let's remind myself, um, a 1d4 fire damage. Yep. A 1d4 radiant damage from the brew. Yep. Uh, a normal 1d8, uh, 10, uh, slashing damage, and let me just... Okay, get all the damage and then just tell me, because I'm yeah. not going to be able to remember. You know, I might as well... I might as well. You might. Pull a smite? Yeah. By the way, what did <laughs> what you roll right? on the Bardic Inspo dice? Uh, I want a four. Okay. What? Do the elves count as undead? They do. <laughs> Bonus smite damage. Uh, so that is... Wait, is Eldrick attacking the Mushroom King or the Elf? Uh, this was the Mushroom King. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, that's an extra 14 on top of the 10, so that is 24. 24, okay. and how wow. much of that was fire damage? Uh, the 4 was fire damage, so that should be 8. 
Okay. Yeah, so you go to strike the Mushroom King, and this elf basically pulls a get down, Mr. President, and you hit it instead. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're hitting the elf, and- you're doing 1d8 one, one extra damage, because smiting an undead does an oh. additional 1d8. This is true, but they don't even need to roll it because that is kind of oh. overkill. <laughs> oh, fair. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm going to roll it anyway, just to say. Yeah. No, fair enough. Nice. What does when also happen, damaged. though, is that the Bardic Inspo um, basically booms when you hit, and that hits everything within five feet of the attack um, of my choice, I think it is, yeah. Um, so the Mushroom King has to make a DC 15 con save again. Or take four extra right. thunder damage. Or take four thunder damage because he took no damage from that attack. Yeah, natural one. So. <laughs> we do more damage then. Yeah. That's okay, the first time so this worked for that. It's nice. So the mushroom, uh, the undead elf servant wearing the fancy chef armor bubbles and explodes like the one did previously. And I need you to roll me a con save. Oh boy. Um, Tanwin, if you're going to wear that, you might want to clean it off first. Ooh. I would. I, that's, that's a five. That, yes. That's a five. Ooh. That's hey, a if five. it makes you feel any. If it makes you feel any better, the Mushroom King also failed his con save. Do you have inspiration? Uh, no, I just. I oh, used yeah. to um, yeah. avoid losing concentration. Uh, I assume I'm going to need to wall a new concentration because of the um, oh, bolt damage. Steal the fate. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You take four poison damage. Uh, that's and a 15. The... Yeah. You're good. And wouldn't you know it, instead of taking any poison damage, the Mushroom King heals up. Okay, so it heals some poison. Got it. Uh, how much poison damage was it? A four. four. Do I have pulses And it on just me? explodes. Oh, I do. Are you a dwarf? No, they're a young um, Ace Ace Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm an Ace Mall. I just, I keep seeing the beard and just guessing. It is quite a dwarven looking um, beard. It's, it's quite a dwarven beard. It's a good beard. It's a good thick beard. It's a really good beard. He is very yeah. proud of it. I was just going to say, because um, if you did, you'd have advantage on the con save. Our only oh, dwarf, I, though, I, is on the other side of the room. <laughs> <laughs> it's not very good at close range. <laughs> Divine Smite is just a thing I can do. It doesn't take anything, right? Uh, it costs a level one spell slot. Yep. But it but it does not take my bonus action, right? Oh, no, yeah, no. It's, it, t- it takes no action at all to add that onto an attack. Is that your turn? Because I'm... Pretty sure you've done everything. Uh, Blue, I can't remember. In the other campaign we go to, is the Zrinkin a uh, healing pulse and a bonus action? Just Here it's an action. Me? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I could say and it's a bonus action, but I'm not feeling nice. And lay on hands is sadly not a bonus action. Sadly. Nope. Mm. So, uh, yes, that'll be my turn. Okay. Tanwin. You're serving, hey. ship, hey, serving the monarchy seems kind of outdated, so you've decided against it now. Wait, I only serve... Wait, I serve no god and no master? I'm on holiday. <laughs> How dare you try to make me work on my hell, on my Gwilio? For this, he must die. <laughs> okay, and Tamwin's going to run. Uh, going to bonus action dash all the way around behind the Mushroom King. And she's going to manifest her psychic sword and stab as an advantage okay. because she's got a flank from Russia flank. and flank, Grandpa flank. Pardon. Yeah. Come on, natural 20. Okay, mm. 21, I'll take it. 21 hits. Okay, time for some sweet, sweet um, psychic damage. 17 points of damage. Nice. Psychic. Okay. That's pretty good. And... Okay, use this my bonus starting to look to bloody. Here. Yep. That's my go, then. Okay. 
Russell, okay. Here we go. Hand axe time. Uh, that is a unnatural 20 to hit. Okay. That advantage really makes my attack rolls go up. Um, yes, that's it does. Gonna, that's going to be six points of slashing damage. Its movement speed is reduced by 10 feet. I'm going to activate Flurry of Blows to do two slashes with my talons. First one is uh, 22 to hit. And the second one Be is surprised that hits. 16 to hit. And that one. Oh, okay. That one just beats it. Meets okay. it. Okay. Uh, so that is 5 plus 5, 10 points of slashing damage. And I'm going 1, okay. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Out the door. <laughs> Taking no attack of opportunity. Yep. Hey, Frida. You should just come Are out here. Right Russell, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Are you, are you hurt? No, I haven't even been... Well, I've been hit, but, like, I, I'm feeling good, you know? Eldrick, how are you doing, dear? Uh, a bit banged up. I was actually gonna drink this potion when I had the sands. Uh, may, maybe hold on to it. I'll, um, I'll come and help you out. Frida will come up. Probably a good idea to hold on to it because it is a potion of greater healing. Yeah, uh, she'll she'll cast cure wounds um, for um, one d eight plus five. Oh, nice twelve. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that is all because she has used up all her movement speed because she got tiny little dwarf legs. And that mm. puts me to twenty five. How nice. Hi, tiny little dwarf leggies. <laughs> okay, so it's the Mushroom King's turn. He's pretty angry, if a mushroom could be angry. Yeah. So he's going to make some slime attacks against the thing that just literally betrayed his service and stabbed him in the back. <laughs> Let's see. 19 hits, I'm assuming. Yep. And that's just one. Okay, yeah, that also hits because that is a 21. That also hits. Ooh, this is gonna suck. <sighs> it is gonna suck a lot. Ooh, considering uh, this is the first time he's decided to attack twice instead of using a mushroom egg. I, ho I think that's a d10. E? 16 damage mm. for the first attack. For the first attack. Yep. Don't get hit, lol. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in danger. I only have 30 max HP. You'll be fine. 15 for the second. See? Yep, I'm down. You. F oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> I can't do maths. <laughs> Unfortunate. Unfortunately, and I wasn't. That is it. Go. Max HP. Yeah. Luckily, because it did its two slams, it's not going to do any uh, spore things. Which oh, I need to video. see if they recharge. Oh, something definitely happened. Mm. Oh no. I would like to try and invoke divine intervention to avoid going down. Okay. Okay. Can you do that? Uh, this is what you've done. I don't know, can I? It does use your action and bonus action to do the oh, okay. intervention. Okay. It's alright, like, I could just pick you up again, it'll be fine. You'll be alright. Speaking yeah. of, it's some kind of action. Also, I think this is the first time I've downed a player. Nice. Wait, maybe. It gets addictive. <laughs> yeah. Player <laughs> action time. On the PC. Oh, it's, it's great. Just wait till you get your first taste of blood. <laughs> first taste of blood. <laughs> ah. Okay. The mushrooms in the room shake and release more bright purple spores into the air. You don't know what it does. Oh. Excuse me? <laughs> Grandpa Paladin's turn. <laughs> no, hold on, back up. What do you mean by that? We don't know what it does. Yeah, I guess you'll find out. Uh, okay. I will, uh, come to smack it. Okay. 
Does a 22 hit? 22 does hit. You can use your bonus action to add some fire damage. Uh, you know what? Yes, I am well. Uh, let's see. It specifically has to say spice it up, right? Yep. Because I wanted to be silly. Find a thing of a line that fits at isn't the same time to spice it up again. Your life. Da, 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 da. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> oh, Boymaker walks into the room. Mm. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and roll your damage and you can think of your line. Uh, that is eight slashing damage and I'm doing math. Okay. Uh, that is 15. Take it into account the extra free. Uh, 18. 18. Yeah, 18. 18 what? Uh, well, eight slashing damage, four radiant, uh, three fire damage would become six. So, so it's just eight already all in total. Okay. Got it. Tanwin! Death save. Okay, I'm going Don't to get defer to my um I'm going to defer to a physical dice for this. Twelve. Ooh, That's five. one success. Russell! Tanwin! Tanwin go down. So 30, 35. 40! Okay, it's um, it's gonna be everything. Oh wait, forty-five, fifty, so that Grandpa Paladin can have some flanking as well. Um, returning hand axe. Okay, that's a natural eighteen, so that's probably gonna hit. We're not considering I have a plus seven yep. modifier. Okay. And that is six points of slashing damage, reducing its movement speed by ten feet. Not that it is moved this entire <laughs> combat, because we're Not right that up next it to it. Can it's just planted? Do <laughs> you want to know what this thing's actual movement speed is? Is it ten feet? Is it zero? It's twenty. Oh, mm. okay. Uh, and then flurry of blows. So two talons. Um, first one is a nineteen to hit. Second one is a twenty to hit, unnatural. And so that's going to be... Okay. Just uh, give me the damage total, please. Yeah, I am. 14 slashing damage on top of the previous one. Okay. I do those two separate because the, the returning hand axe is magical and the talons are not uh, yet. They will be eventually. Hmm. And that is my turn. I'll be able to slash ghosts. Oh, I'll just move five Pretty more feet because I can. Okay. Yeah. Um, Why not? All right, Frida is going to. Wait, can I make it brown? Uh, I... Okay, she'll have to do this and come round to um, Tanwen and we'll cast Cure Wounds at uh, second level for 2d8 plus 5. Yeah, 14. And you're back up. Ah, uh -uh. not so fast. So you remember oh. how I said you don't know what the lair action does? Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> uh oh, spaghettios. <laughs> the healing magic doesn't seem to be as effective as you were expecting. The spores are absorbing some of the magic, and not all of it is getting to Tanwin. Tanwin, you only get seven HP. Ah, damn it. <laughs> Yucky da. Ah, oh, better than nothing. Um, and, and, and that is all. Okay. It's the Mushroom King's turn. So y'all know what recharged? Everybody, oh, please roll no. me. <laughs> Everybody? Oh, fuck. You're all within five feet. It'd be really bad if all of us failed this. <laughs> wisdom <laughs> save. Like... Everyone. Oh, it's a wisdom, wisdom save. save. Oh, oh it's wisdom. It's a con save. Oh, no, that's no. so There's, much better. He's got different things they can do. He's got right. different things they can okay, do. Okay, okay. Sixteen well, with disadvantage. Nineteen. Because I'm a monk. Okay, this I'm is what we're good at. We weirdly do not have proficiency in them. But oh, that's... my inspiration did not help. Uh, oh, well, at least I don't. I got an damage. eight. Okay, so. To simplify this for me, who rolled a 13 or higher? 
Me. Or rather, who rolled at 12 or lower? Not me. I Frida did. and Eldrick did. Okay. Yeah. Frida and Eldrick. Okay. I Sorry, I forgot to read this part last time, but um, everybody who passed takes half of five damage. Everyone who failed takes five damage. Oh, okay. Okay, that's two damage. And everyone who failed now sees the Mushroom King as their best friend and will defend him with their life. Oh, I have 22 AC. I'm sorry. That's all right. You can't hit me. You're on the other side as well, anyway. It's fine. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so that's half of its turn. It's seeing someone undo its hard work. Now, see, the fun thing, the notes for running this say the Mushroom King is at least smart enough to understand the concept of magic, meaning it would understand go for the healer first. But the healer is currently in its employ. So... For a second there, I thought you'd forgotten instantly. <laughs> no. It's going to go for the rogue again. Luckily, it's only one attack this time. What's uh, your AC, Tanwin? Because that may not hit. You've got Full advantage. Scene. Yeah, yep. Tanwin's prone. Oh, it's got a band. That's even worse. Thank God. Uh, uh, I rolled a 12. Yep, you somehow missed the, uh... But, uh, you missed the dazed tiefling on the ground somehow. <laughs> uh, to be fair, there's a yeah, lot somehow. going on just here at the moment. It, it's a little confused. It's like, what am I... Rah, yeah. Rah, rah. yeah, to be fair, it probably uh, changed its target mid-attack. Yeah, probably. Because, wait, this thing's working for me now. Play action time. Since it can't do the same thing two turns in a row. Da 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 da. Da da da. Everybody's blind again. Oh no, As we've gone same... through all the lair actions. Damn it. Yeah, that tracks is about three usually on the well, it... Yeah. The same purple spores cloud all your vision once again. Of course. Grandpa Paladin! Hello. Your boss is in danger. Oh, I am so sorry, Russell. Uh, Russell, you, you, you should really stop attacking the, um, the cane. Will you stop, or am I going to have to get hands on? Bring it. You have advantage. Huh? No, he's blind. Oh, is he blind as well? I wasn't sure if it affected the allies. I... All creatures, right? Yeah. It oh, says sweet. all creatures. Sweet. Oh, that's all right. That evens out. Then. Uh, Russell, there's a 24 hit. Yep. With this event? Okay. No, it evens out. It wouldn't be disadvantage. Yeah, Fair it evens enough. out. Because the you can... Yeah, that's right. Uh, that is 8 slashing damage. So that's tw uh, no, 12 slashing damage. Because I got max 8 plus 5. And then a Radiant. Are you smiting still? Uh, no, the Ignoble Brew gives me a 1d4 Radiant. Ah, uh, yep. yeah, yeah. And that is 4 Radiant damage. Okay, so that's 16, right? Yes. Hmm. Not too bad. I did the maximum possible damage on you. You've I've taken 7 hit points of off. damage. Nice. Tanwin. <laughs> Your go. Would you like to try some infernal aid? Uh, yep. I think we're in trouble here. Ah, we can beat him. Just yeah. keep leaving the room between fights. It's easy. <laughs> oh, yeah, because I both definitely have that okay. much movement. It can't even chase mm. you. I keep slowing it down to 10 feet of movement speed, but we all keep standing yeah. next to it. Just yeah. kite it. <laughs> so, that, that one's going to use... Um, half her movement stand up again she is going to move and she's got a flank from Russell to offset the um, Indeed. disadvantage so that's going to be a straight attack insofar as I do anything straight does a 12 hit no okay I'm afraid not well 
bonus action disengage, and her last five foot of movement is to move over here. There you go. Good luck, Russell. Thanks. Okay. We're going to do exactly what I did before, but again. Returning hand axe, although not at advantage this time, but not at disadvantage at least. Natural 20. Wonderful. Um, okay, hold on. <laughs> Grandpa Paladin, would you use your protection to impose disadvantage? Badly? Yes, I would. It's fine. It doesn't matter. I was blinded, so there was already one stack of disadvantage. They don't stack up beyond that. Mm. Okay, they don't. Okay, yeah. Sorry. So thank you for using your reaction. That actually saves me a little bit of work. Uh, in a second, Grandpa Paladin. <laughs> um, so that's nonetheless a natural 20. And then I'm going to follow it up with a flurry of blows. Okay. So that's a four. That's not going to... And that's a two. That's Roll not me the we damage. We got the nat 20. So... Uh, yeah, you did. You we got did. the nat 20, so uh, we'll go for that. That is 15 slashing damage. And its movement speed is reduced okay. by 10 feet again. And I'm just... Fucking no. Off. Frida's movement speed is reduced by 10 feet as Frida does a get down, Mr. President. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right, how much it takes all that lovely take? damage. How much was that? 15. Oh, man. That, that's miles. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 40, 50, 55, 60. I'm out. Damn monster, that insane movement. Yep. How much damage you just take, Freedom? Fifteen. Fifteen. Oof. Mm. You are not looking pretty. No, I'm. I'm in trouble. What's your What's your health total right now? Eight. Oh, okay. There's an HP tracker in the combat tracker. I wasn't sure if you were using it or not. I just do it in my couch sheet. Fair enough. Your turn. Um, yeah, uh, well, I mean, all of the threats have now moved away from the the king. I think uh, he should probably uh, wander over here and just get in between Tanwen and the king just to uh, to be a physical barrier. And uh, your movement we'll, speed was reduced. To... Uh, yeah, yeah your movement speed move. is now 15 feet. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, 10 feet because she's dwarf. Um, but she can still get there. Isn't your movement speed normally 25? Yes, 25. Oh, yeah, 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 no, yeah, maths, fuck, yeah. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> I'm good at this, yeah. Um, so, yeah, she'll get in between them, uh, and then she'll cast uh, Cure Wounds on herself. Um, or, oh, wait, we've still got the... F oh, no, it's not the... No, okay, right. Hey, everybody's so, blind right now. Yeah. She'll do a, a, a second-level Cure Wounds or... 2d8 plus 5 13 that is my last second level spell slots Wait a minute. and that is all okay oh Nick you aren't streaming the thing that tells me when to go to break no we can just do it after this battle yeah, that's fine. yeah I did do that how much did you heal up freedom I healed up 13 okay not too bad. Mushroom Kings go. It can only move uh, 10 feet. So it was here. So 5 is all it needs to move. And it's going to go after 10 when... Ah, salami. That's... Goodbye, I mean, everything else is Yeah, everything else is currently working for it. Uh, natural 19. That hits. It do. I mean, hey, look on a bus, at least it's not a fighter that can uh, critical hit on 19s. Hmm. Yeah, this is true. Wow, almost minimum damage. And yet, Tamwin's still down. Oh. Yep, it's gonna do the second attack. Oh boy. Natural 14. That's just what it needs. Oh, yep. two death save failures. Yep. Ooh, Indeed. Oh, oh no. When does Eldrick get on back. His turn. Eldrick, I'm gonna deeply request you use lay on hands. <laughs> All your greater healing potion. It's lair action turn. Yeah, I made this thing, I called it lair action, stuck it in the combat tracker. 
Yeah, it makes I sense. I thought that was. I, uh, I do that sometimes as well. Mm. If if there's a lot yeah. of things to to track, it's really helpful. Yeah. These familiar spores that you previously didn't know what they do have started uh, coming out of the mushrooms. And you can assume that healing will be halved for this round. Again? Oh, no. Yeah, I mean, last round was blinded. It can't do the same thing twice in a row. Alright, uh, I am free of its control, right? You are. Okay. Uh, five, ten... Aldrich is confused no more. Ah, and it doesn't get an attack of opportunity because... Uh... Fun. It's still in range, eh? Yeah, with yeah. their actions, generally, you can't do the same thing twice, and you can't use one that's been used before until you've used all of the lair actions. So it kind of forces you to use them. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That's in general. Use... Some monsters can have it different. Well, and you have yeah. cycled through, though, so... Yeah. I can even use my lay on hands or healing hands. I'll use, um... I'll use 12 uh, points of the healing hands. Which is have to six. Yeah. To be fair, that is more health than I had when I went down. And you're now stabilized, so at least you won't possibly die. Hey, yeah, uh, well, I'm everyone? back up now. How are we feeling about this fight? I, I think you're right, Russell. Maybe we uh, try and uh, take this thing on from range. Because if not, I can end it right <laughs> now. If we're worried. Technically, Frida is still um, under the influence of the Mushroom King. Frida is still, yes. Your choice. If you're scared, I can end this right now. How, Russell? Trust me. Okay. I think at this point, Tamwen is, um, well, from Tamwen's perspective, she's been knocked down and picked back up again several times. She's very worried she, her holiday is about to come to an abrupt end. So I think she's going to um, try and invoke divine aid. Okay. I'll donate um, on Divine Guidance. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to bring up the rules again so I can uh, double check them. You start You start with a d20. Have you acted in accordance with your faith? Yep. That conversation with okay, Russell is so definitely um, in accordance with my faith. Who's your god? With your sheets. The sheet I'm, says Ignova. I'm wiggle. Uh, my sheet says Ignova, yes. The one you've sent me is not a god you can use for divine favor. That's true. <laughs> So you don't yeah. get that one. I uh, know I was drinking uh, Ignova's booze. Eh, it doesn't count. <laughs> yeah, okay, Ignova's fine. not the god of booze. <laughs> 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 or Russell would That's be fair. Ignovan, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so is it just a D... Uh, sorry, so is it just two D20s or... 1D20, because you start with one. One if you yeah. back in accordance with your faith, and one for every divine aid you're spending. And one for everyone else is donating. So who's donating a dice? I'm donating one. Uh, oh, yeah. I, one I am three. actually pulling up the wolf's real quick. Give me a second. Has uh, Elder Wolf done religious service at any point? I don't think I have. I'd have to go back and look for two quests. No, Maybe this will be a downtime activity. Have... Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, I know Frida would have donated, but she's currently under the sway of the king, so I don't think she would now. She would not. She doesn't want anyone okay. harming her king. Okay, so that's just a free dice then, is that right? Yep. Or is it two? Okay. Uh, just, just three. Yeah, three. Because you're getting one from okay. Russell and one from yourself. Okay, in that case, I'll roll Russell separately so we know whether or not it's his. <laughs> if it's Petrical coming in. Clutch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, Natural look at 20. that. Nice. <laughs> roll Russell's just in case. I mean, it doesn't matter. <laughs> You've yeah. got it. Yeah. Well, what if Russell, two got to help? Yeah, what <laughs> if two natural 20s? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on, uh, it's a d6 to see how good this is, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, Russell, you suck. 
No, I know. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, um, I think Tam went, what Tam wants is just, okay, screw it, do something about this damn mushroom now. Yeah. So it's 1d6, and you can re-roll if you would like using a divine favor. Yeah. Okay, three years, moderate aid. Yeah, moderate aid, about 48 damage, or roughly a level three spell. Depending on what the DM yeah. wants to do. So, how's Tanwin asking for this? Because I asked Infus to do the same for me. So, uh, yeah. roleplay. Okay, so I think basically she's saying, oh, for God, goodness sake, end this freaking mushroom before it gets me. Sorry, end this mushroom before it gets me. All right. And uh, if your god is who I assume it is, you'll hear... Well, it would be, well, I suppose um, it would be Ignova. Ignova. Yeah. Which might actually yeah. be very helpful in this case, because Ignova's all about fire. <laughs> Indeed. Let's pull up a list of all the fire spells. You know what a third level <laughs> fire spell is? Fireball. Fireball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which would hit everyone. Yeah. That, <laughs> that might be unfortunate. So, <laughs> Look, it's I'm fine. Not... I'm totally immune to fireball. You know, it'll be, it, it's funny. It, it's funny. Uh, okay, so you hear this response that is Ilks has described is something like a scorching heat. Not words so much as a feeling. And you get a bright light flashes in the room as the Mushroom King is consumed by a fireball. And so are several other people. I mean, the, oh, no. a fireball would also hit Tanwin, though, right? I, I don't think a god would do that to her. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, fine. I, I just mean funny, but uh, let's see. What's the range of a fireball? 30 feet? It is a 20-foot radius sphere, and the range is 150 okay. feet. I, yeah. Okay, um, I can't... Mm. Oh. I mean, you could center it in yeah. the corner of the room. And... Yeah, no, I, yeah. I can absolutely hit the mushroom. But... I kind of... Hmm. Do I want to hit Frida because she's still technically a threat? Nah. Now, hold on a minute. He would be hitting the actual favor solvent. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm just messing with y'all. I mean, Raw, there is usually a complication. Uh, unless you get a six. So it's up to you what the complication okay. is. But there is usually a complication unless you get a six on that d6. Okay. Well, then. I feel justified in being mean, then. Oh. Tamwin's dead. You're not going to get hit. But Frida is still technically a threat. As is the Paladin, apparently. Hey, it's fine. He's Just pass the deck save. There. There. Just pass the deck save. What do you know? Deck I think I actually could pass a deck save. Frida, you've got to be dexterous, right? You can't be bad at every I, stat. I have, I've at least got plus two in decks. There we go. What would be the DC on this? Uh, the DC would be, if the Mushroom has a spell save DC, it's going to be that. If not, um, oh no, no, this Wait, would no, be... no, it's not coming from the Mushroom, this is coming no, from... yeah, this would be coming from a god. Um, <laughs> I would usually go for the person asking for it, spell save DC, if they have one. Uh, or if not, choose wisdom, uh, based off their wisdom. Oh. Okay, so, so Tam, uh, Tamwin's Tiefling spells run off Charisma, which is a DC of 13. That would track, yeah, if you've already got a spell save DC. Actually, hold up. Yeah. So, roll me deck saves. It's and I'll me, roll right? one. Yep. Because you're still a threat. Fortunately, I mean, because much... I have my special armor, I get advantage on deck saves against fire damage. You know, True. And the Mushroom King fails. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. You passed. Yeah. Okay, and that is a bunch of fire damage, which this thing is vulnerable to. So honestly, do I even need to roll the damage? I think I do. <laughs> I mean, you do. I still cool. take half. Yeah. yeah. Eight d six. Yep. Plus, you know, I invoked a god. I know my rights. I want to see that damage. <laughs> <laughs> Four, five, six, seven, eight. Twenty-eight rolling dice. Okay, Fifty-six damage on the mushroom. The Mushroom King is consumed in a column, well, in a big fireball, and is just 
absolutely scorched down to an unmoving, nicely roasted husk of mushroom. Mm, it is dead. delicious. Hey. My liege, my king. And Freda is now mourning the loss of her king. And is also lightly uh, scorched uh, herself. Told you I could sort Six it out. Seconds. Russell's looking at his wingtips in like confusion. <laughs> Uh, Tan when look, makes eye con- contact with Russell and rolls her eyes. How can you make eye contact and roll your eyes? Well, you make eye contact and do the eye roll. Oh, right. I thought you meant simultaneously. <laughs> I was trying to imagine that in my head. Like, you just make sure they're looking at you when you eye roll at them. <laughs> um, just for your in character thing, would. Outwick for being able to tell that was um, intervention from Ignova. Roll me a religion check. It's um, it's like verbal and stuff, isn't it? Divine aid. Like you actually have to pray. Yeah. So that would have all been out loud. Yeah, you would have heard Tamwin saying. Okay. Yeah. Per the agreed contract, I invoke my favor to Ignova. <laughs> Torch this stupid mushroom. Lest my Gwilio be cut short. Uh, in that case, Aldo is just going to offer a quick prayer of thanks to ignore him in that case. Frida will be dusting off some uh, remnant flames off of her clothing. <laughs> oh, my hair uh, has been lightly scorched too. That was a bit uh, drastic. Frida, you okay? I could have, uh, could have dealt with that if you wanted. But, um, that I, was dramatic. I wanted to deal with it. I wanted to deal with it this way. Okay. So what was your plan? Can anyone remember what hit points I was on? I updated the sheet because initiative tracker. Oh, that's my bad. Uh, no, I can. I can I check. Not remember. I'm I think sorry. I was on twenty-two. I think I took seven after the temporary HP went. I think only you and Blue can yeah. see it. Yep. Okay. Well, let me check the log. Um. Also, Should we maybe go to break and, uh, and figure out during that? Yeah, yeah break yeah. time. Yep, let's go to break. There we go. I was okay, down three like, points like... with that um, fireball. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> so, uh, Blue. Yo. Can I eat some of that mushroom? <laughs> oh, oh, I accidentally <laughs> deleted Russell. Oh, no. <laughs> Dude, it happens. Same. Oh, fireball. Like, you, okay. You the mushroom smells good. I kind of want to eat it now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can. Uh, it is hey, a... reminder everyone who needs to pee should pee. I'm going to uh, go yes. pee yep. and then feed my cat. I'm already peeing. Uh, wait, 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 what? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. Uh, Frida was down to like 7 HP. Oh. Grandpa Paladin barely took any damage after the healing. Tanwin was. I think on six HP total due to the hand healing. So I assumed like you were that. all were. I assumed you all were also tracking your HP. The combat tracker was just for my benefit. Uh, yeah. That's my bad. Hey, while I was just doing this break, um, could I just say I use my wholeness divine power to regain a spell slot? If you want. Yeah, I'm just gonna do that. And I, I think I'm gonna suggest that we do a long rest anyway because I'm out of spell slots and I'm, I've am i only got one Bardic Inspo left. Fair enough. I think, uh, well, you all I will lose your fun one food first benefits, level spell but slot you kind of need it. Man. Yeah. It's like... Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm pretty useless um, apart from spells, really. Uh, I'm not useless. I, I got Battle Axe. I just generally don't use it. All right, I'm going to go for a wait, and then we'll come back. Yeah. Well, that was a spicy battle. It was yeah, spicy. Yeah, you could have with the fire gym. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it, it would have taken a long time, right? But, uh, I may actually have been, have been able to 1v1 it, it without the fire gem just by running mm-hmm. out, back in, hit, out, back mm-hmm. in, hit, out, back in, okay. hit. Wait, what but... was the fire gem? I have an elemental gem for a fire elemental. Oh. Uh, well, uh, every time an elemental has come out in this game so far, it's been bad news. So. Yes, but I would simply <laughs> not get hit. And as yeah, the monk, yeah. I can like, kind of guarantee that. <laughs> this thing 
had 152 HP. Wow. And 20 foot movement speed. Hey, uh, it was almost dead. The, I think the yeah. a, a massive danger with the uh, elemental um, out would have been that you uh, get overtaken by the uh, Mike and did thingy with the mind thingy. Yeah, imagine an mm. elemental suddenly turning against you. Whenever would that happen? <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't last long enough to be a problem, I think. If As long as I can keep my distance, which, you know, a movement speed of 50 feet. Yeah. Look on the, look on the bright side. Uh, there was no mimics here. Not yet. Not Unless... yet. Unless... A food mimic. That's yeah. I I can definitely see that happening. What if Russell's the mimic? <laughs> <laughs> There's definitely not a food mimic in the dragon stew book. Definitely not. Oh, most definitely not. There is an official dragon stew map for this fight. I just wanted to make my own iteration. It's it's the same layout, just mushrooms everywhere, broken tiles, stairs. There'd yeah, mate, be no guarantee um, that we'd be able you, to use the official map anyway. You keep the uh, the, the style of the map you do, and it all kind of uh, fills your thing anyway. And yeah, yeah. this looks great. This uh, setup you've got here. Oh shit! Is that hidden? Oh, that is hidden. That's my bad. Okay. What have you? What have you been hiding from us? Nothing. A good perception check can't find. Oh, okay. Our investigation. Well, the recipe specified diced mushrooms lightly roasted, and you don't get better lightly roasted than Divine Flame Fireball. <laughs> yep, and since it was done by Nova, it's technically, um, it was technically, uh, wood flamed. Yeah. We all back? Yep. Yes. Okay. Hold on, I'm just going to take my estrogen. Well, we're already on the main screen. Yep, now I'm back. All right. Okay. Welcome back. I hope you all enjoyed the mushroom fight. I downed two people, technically the same person twice. <laughs> I wanted I'm to be people. real mean with the divine aid, but I was like, nah, I'll just go for the two threats. Right, well, uh, seeing as I've not been sacrificed to uh, Ignova, then... um. I suppose I'll capture up some of this uh, mushroom to use in the recipe. Uh, She'll kind of give um, Tanwin a little bit of a glare there and uh, kind of dust herself down. Could could you uh, break off a piece for me to sigh? I'm kind of curious. There are rules for this. Roll me a survival check to see how much you harvest. Or whoever's doing it. Um, can I have advantage on this with my background of being a food preparer person? Yes. Yay. Oh, yeah. It's a good uh, thing Tamman that I don't like do um, Tamwin would like to claim one of those suits of armor, by the way. Oh, it's only a 12. Even with advantage. Okay. You, you're pretty sure you have enough usable mushroom flesh for the recipe. Cool. And Tanwin? You get a suit of purple leather chef's armor. Mechanically, it is studded leather. Armor of fungal spores. And what that means is you can take a bonus action to make the armor emit poisonous spores which fill a 10-foot radius centered on yourself. And everything else in there needs to do a DC 15 con save or become poisoned until the end of your next turn. Oh, that's cool. Nice. Especially for a close oh, range, like a rogue. Nice. Yeah. And it, okay. I'll, I'll get you the text. But it's it uh, once a day event? thing. Doesn't say no. Okay. Got another lovely item Does from Tamlin the book of many things. Tamlin cool. looks like a chef now. <laughs> the purple hat is mandatory. Well, a chef. One of them poofy chef hats. Yeah. Yeah. Well, to be fair, she's... Uh... She looks like a chef wearing a cloak over her chef outfit. Mm. That's so like a chef working a walk-in freezer. Okay, you have a good chunk of the recipe. You got some soup spices. Those might be the same as stew spices, but um, 
would anyone like to, since I revealed that there was something hidden here, roll me a perception check. Up a perception check. Is this from everyone? Minus two. Don't let him do. Oh. Anyone looking for I'll anything give it in a room? go as someone who is blind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, if I can use investigation, then yeah, I'll, I'll say that. A oh, four. I think I find jack shit. 22. Okay. Okay. Yeah, 22. You're looking around, and you see this bottle over here. It looks pretty similar to the one you found in the main room, except it's got the golden filigree on the edge. Do I have any idea what it might do? And you can drink it and find out. But it looks like a healing potion of some kind. Okay. Uh, are we still doing that? Are we still doing a long rest, by the way? I, I think, I think we could maybe do with a bit of a lie down. Um, I could probably do with getting rid of some of this alcohol from my system. Hey, uh, does anyone know? Uh, does anyone know magic? It's arcana, if you will. I'm not entirely uh, sure yeah, what it's kind of I know a tiny bit, not much, tiny bit. I, I should have a take one. a look. Yes, the Aarakoc with disadvantage on literally everything. I have a plus zero. <laughs> I have yes. a plus one and I don't have disadvantage. I think you've got the most yeah, Arcana of anyone. Tamwen has plus one herself, but... I think it's probably <laughs> water. It is uh, clearly red and enchanted. It's red water. Frida will kind of put her arm around Russell and just kind of walk him off. To let's leave them to it, shall we? Um, let's get you to, uh, well, a, a seat somewhere. Well, in my view, listener. it looks like... Yeah, I've got nothing. Uh, okay. Uh, what is an unnatural 20 get, mate? Okay, an unnatural 20 allows me to break the fourth wall and explain to Sophia that this is a sugar rush potion of greater healing. Oh, that's really good. Uh, I'll let Sophia so, explain it. So, um, any sugar rust potion basically gives you the maximum healing that potion can do. Twenty so great, Yeah, so for greater healing, you just heal 20. Yeah, I'm just pulling shit from the Dragon Stew book for this dungeon. Awesome. It's also why um, the cook class probably can't be in here, because they can just make those, and it's very strong. Yep. I am I am the party's only healer in the Shadow Star campaign because of that. Okay, so I mean, you... uh, 20 HP of healing. Yes. That's funny. Yep. Nice. Also, Eldrick, are you sampling some of the Mushroom King? Yes. Okay. It tastes... Pretty smoky and delicious. I don't know mm -hmm. if Eldrick's eaten much uh, mushroom in the past, but it, it's like a, a, a nice roast shiitake. That's pretty good. Now, given what this comes from, does it give me any kind of bonus? No. Not Damn without it. properly cooking it into something. Like... Oh, oh before we yeah, leave it's, the yeah, and try and work out what happened here. Yeah, sure. Roll me some kind of check you can justify. Okay. Could I argue insights just to work out what everyone was doing? Sure. I'll let you roll insight. Yay. I hear I can see the title of nicest DM. <laughs> 21. 21. So, the sign coming into this room was labeled Shroomery. The book said this is a mushroom farm and to ask help from Mary and Ace the two elven assistants the two elven assistants were overtaken by spores obviously coming from the mushroom king as it had taken over several of the party members at one point or another so what happened this place used to be a nice standard mushroom farm until the mushroom king theoretically slowly took control of the assistants and ruined the place I wonder where this Mushroom King originated from. Perhaps one of these mushrooms mutated? Mm, maybe. Uh, anyway, we should probably get to the room and 
Take that nap everyone wants. Yep. Does look like you need it. I could use a good night's sleep. I think by the time you get here, Frida's already asleep. And you all go down for a nice nap. Except Half. Russell and Tanwin. I... Ow. Cedric, no, don't go near the... <gasps> no. Oh, I, I've got something for this. I was hoping I would do a long rest. <laughs> oh, 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 oh no! Of Russell and Tanwin. <gasps> uh... Ooh. Uh, oh. uh, uh, this is a cool map. Did you make this map? Yeah, no, surely. No, not. oh hell no! I'm not nearly this. <laughs> I'm not nearly this good. I was gonna say, wow. Wait, Where is this map from? Wait, it's really cool. Wait, wait, this is a non. This is. From, I have a right to disconnect. You know. Ah, it's from the. I, I forgot the source. Uh, Seppuku. Seppuku. Oh, um, the bond that begins with a C. Um, yeah. You said something. Oh, hey! A friend is here. Well, if it isn't Tam, my favorite subordinate. Welcome. Would you like a drink? We have, well, everything. I don't want to have a drink again. Where am I? Why, why is Tamwin here? Bus, this is completely unacceptable. I have a right to disconnect while I'm on holiday. You can't just call me in like this. Oh, I have called you and you're still exactly where you were. Thanks to that lovely little drink you two had. Hanlon. Thank you. An extra soul. Always appreciated. And I Russell, I, I thought I'd keep doing it. Mm. I went and Russell, I thing. thought you might appreciate And you've earned it. I thought Russell might appreciate a small preview. Can't believe your so-called friend sold your soul to eternal torment just like that. What? 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 And he's looking straight at Tamwin. What? But well, it was clear what you were getting into. No, I thought you worked in an. You said you worked in an office. Tamwin gestures around, gestures around her. Sorry if I'm. Slow, I'm editing the attribution because we have to attribute in battle maps. Yes. <laughs> I was going to. Yeah, no, I've got to put it in the description specifically and legally. Uh, okay. That's my plan. Yeah, it's now in the description. Right. Uh, oh, no, I've got to update YouTube as well. Hold on, I'll be right there. <laughs> Apologies, this is my fault. It's all right. Okay, updated. All right, we're good to go. <laughs> uh, right. You, you, you said you said you worked in an office. This is not an office. This is not an office, Tanwin. No office Wait, has skulls office. everywhere. No, this is not an office. Why didn't you just say you worked for the devil, Tanwin? Well, I didn't want to talk about work. Like, if I said I worked for the devil, you'd ask questions. I'd not enter a deal with you, Tanwin. Hmm. Maybe you should have asked some questions. I, I thought sorry, you were I thought my you friend. Understood. I, I, I thought I was. I, I thought you understood. I guess I guess along pretty well with Imp working here. Imp. Oh, I can't move. Imp cannot see you. Imp. Imp. They do not react. I they are just hunched over a desk. Way. Oh, that's my bad. I forgot this scene rolled on a different set of rules. There we go. You're good. Imp? Hunched Imp. over a table, filling out paperwork. Hello, impertinent. It's your favorite they do supervisor. Not react. Oh, I guess I guess they can't perceive us. Big man's has tricks you saw it, isn't he? And don't I love it? Listen to me, you well... big old son of a bitch. <laughs> I can't beat you, but I know I know I know someone who can, and they're coming for you. They're oh, gonna no. beat you. 
they are gonna beat you, and Listen. then everyone will be okay. I don't want to talk to you. Russell, and... Russell, I'm just saying, maybe if uh, you've got a plan, you should not let him know about it. I said I don't want to talk to you. And Ash well, and I will look at Tanwin and say, Oh, would you continue? I don't think uh, Tanwin's got anything, but, well... Yeah. Ash just looks a bit... Ash... Why do I have this aching feeling in my stomach now? Ash, but I will look at Tanwin and say, Poor bird peaked in high school and he's afraid he'll never be that good again. And now he tries to compensate by saving everyone around him. How many friends have you buried, Russell? Shut up. Shut up. Just... Just shut up. And he just laughs. There's probably some big, heavy tears running down Russell's beak right now. Uh, why... Why is this town... Why is everyone going out of their way for Imp? And he will gesture over towards the, uh... Tiefling filling out the paperwork. They sought to outsmart me and they were undone by a set of stairs. Yes, I remember the meeting. We all saw the slides. Lovely work on those slides, by the way, Tanwin. Thank you, boss. You don't really understand friendship, do you? You see it as something to be exploited, but you've never felt it. I almost feel sorry for you. Is friendship, is friendship the feeling you're about to be, be, about to be sick? And at this point, Tanwin has oh. got her head bowed and she's not making eye contact with Russell or Ashman I. I hope you enjoyed the early preview, Russell. Back to your little adventure. Oh my. <laughs> He did say see you soon. Just a little out of character there. That was fantastic. Very well done. <laughs> yeah. Agreed. <laughs> I'm beaming from ear to ear. <laughs> so, that was so great. those two get a proper long rest from that odd. Russell gets a level of exhaustion, but otherwise a proper rest. Oof. When do I get the level of exhaustion? Before or after the rest? <laughs> Well, you now you get a partial. Uh, I'm trying to say the nightmares. You got the sleep. You got your resources back, but it kind of wore you out a bit. So you get the exhaustion when you wake up. Uh, you wake damn. up exhausted. If that makes sense. I didn't yep. even want a long rest. Uh, <laughs> I didn't even need one. Does Tam when does so Tam also get a level of exhaustion or? How does Tam when feel about betraying someone that called her a friend? I think she's actually feeling uh, guilt for the first time in many millennia. Then you can have a level of exhaustion too. And yeah, the fun part is, you all lost your uh, Man of Flames benefits now. Oh. Oh, was that? Uh, oh, I didn't realize. That I said it was until long rest. rest. Uh, okay. Well, at least I have eighteen AC. Well, I no longer have disadvantage on saving throws at least. Yep. Yeah, but... Hey, do you want to get a new disadvantage? We can go back to drinking the, um, the alcohol. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> the booze is just outside this room, and you might wake up feeling like you need it after that. <laughs> this is true. You might want it. Oh, points well. back to maximum. I've gained seven hit points. Hit Bang. dice back to maximum, because I only used one. Well, I feel much better now. That was uh, a good rest needed after that, um, Encounter. Should have just oh, yeah. you, okay. you look a bit pale. <laughs> I um don't want to talk about it. Okay. Tam went still uh, in bed and sort of curled up in the fetal position. Uh, are, are you okay? Don't help her, Eldritch. She'll just betray you. Uh, Ross sort of stomps when... off as best you can when you've got claws for feet. <laughs> Sounds like he's tap dancing on the way out. <laughs> Would you deal with this horrible pa pain in your stomach? Oh, you eat something, dear. You're probably hungry. Uh, Come, what, let's make what, that stew. What kind of pain? You're like you I don't feeling? deserve to eat anything right now. Ah. Well, you, you saved our lives back in that mushroom cave back there, so you should you should feel a sense of pride in yourself, not shame. Can I ask you something? Uh, 
is it okay to betray someone if you were supposed to feel proud of her doing your job? I I suppose it depends on what your job is and how much you care about your job as opposed to the person you've betrayed. What did you do, Tanwin? Uh, uh, I might have wronged Russell a bit. Oh, uh, oh, that would explain his behavior. Um, hmm. I might go and see about Russell. Uh, are you going to be okay? I do not know. When does the aching feeling from uh, betrayal go away? Uh, betraying someone that is not being betrayed yourself? Well, I, I think that's entirely up to you. Maybe there's a way you can make it up to them. Rita is right. Um, betrayal. It's something that only goes away once you feel you've righted the wrong you've committed. Is there a simple rule for that? Uh, is it outlined in a contract somewhere? No, it is not. Precedent, baby? <laughs> no. I think for now we should just make sure we survive and get out of this place and we can work on your penitence uh, at a more opportune moment. Yes, penitence. I haven't heard that for a long time. Let's go. Took you long enough. Russell, I don't exactly know what's happened between you and Tanwin, but we'll work this out. I don't want to talk about that. That's okay. Um, before Alderic does go fully follow them, he will take a Navos drink of the Ignova booze. <laughs> okay. Enjoy your extra 1d4. I will. Am I still the nice DM? Define nice. I mean, yeah. that wasn't your doing. Yeah. No. <laughs> if anyone's to blame, it's Russell. I mean, killing a character is one thing, but psychologically torturing them is another. I mean, psychological <laughs> torture is just being a DM. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, we got one more corridor to go down here. I think. I don't think there's any other passages that we've not explored that we've found so far. Oh, um, Alduk is gonna double sector recipe real quick. So we got the meat and we got the mushrooms. Hello? Sorry, what? I, I got distracted. Uh, I'm double, uh, Alduk is double second the recipe. Ah, uh, yes. Double checking the recipe. Let me pull that up one moment. It's on my sticky notes. Fresh veggies from the garden. Peeled and diced. Spices from the storeroom. Get the right ones. Mushrooms from the shroomery. Diced and lightly roasted. Chopped, dredged meat from the larder. Pick your favorite. Broth from the soupery. Warm chicken stock. Prepare the ingredients with love using your own personal touches and pour into the giant pot. Let simmer overnight and enjoy. Uh, is there anything in it that says what kind of spices? Well, Frida got a bag of spices labeled for soup. Mm -hmm. uh, I also that might be the ones you need. I also got a bag of spices. What did mine say? Mm, I don't remember you getting a bag of spices. Yeah, uh, it, was, it was in the chest in the um, bedroom. You got a Heward's handy spice pouch, which is a magic item that allows you to pull spices out on command, whatever ones you want. Any spice? Uh, let me double check, but it think so. It's one of the minor magical things that don't really too much mechanically, but it, it fits the dungeon. It's a flavor thing. Literally. Uh, yep. <laughs> this belt pouch... Did you uh, give me the rules for um, the uh, armor, by the way? Yeah, sorry, one sec. Um, this belt appears empty and has ten charges. While holding the pouch, you can use an action to expend one of its charges, speak the name of any non-magical food seasoning, such as salt, pepper, saffron, or cilantro, and remove a pinch of the desired seasoning from the pouch. It's enough to season a single meal, normal size, so not the big pot, the Pouncher gains 1d6 plus 4 expended charges daily at dawn. Uh, can I, can this is, can I consider all spice of food and pull that out? <laughs> I mean, all spice, yes, but it is, it is, definitely has its own flavor. <laughs> oh no, who's this I pulled out of the all spice? 
Okay, sending Hanwen. The rules for the armor. I should have done that during the break. My bad. It's okay. Okay, so it is studded leather. We need some chicken stock then. Uh, presumably, there's some sort of chicken monstrosity or this, something down this last corridor. This corridor is labeled a supery and garden. Uh, I will uh, walk in one this time. Thank you. Sign says to the left, supery. To the right, garden. Uh, this pipe is here, right? Yep, that pipe's there. Can I do quickly touch it to see if the pipe is hot? Sure. The pipe is not hot. Okay. Uh, Lightly warm to the touch. Where do we want to go? The um, Shippui or the Garden first? Uh, presumably we'll have to go to both, so I leave it up to you. Choose where you'd like to go first. You're in front. Uh, what way is the Shippui? Shippui is this way. And when are you coming? Yes, sorry. I was just making a note of how this armor works in my um, personal <laughs> journal. Um, I think this might be broke the fourth wall. Uh, mm -hmm. Blue, is, is this um, is this puddle of soup actually here? Hanwen has just broken the fourth wall <laughs> and wandered into an area she shouldn't have seen. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Whoops. Oopsie doopsie. Ash. Luckily. I pretend I didn't yeah. see that. You should, because Russell wouldn't automatically notice it due to the exhaustion. Okay. Uh, Blue, is this some um, puddle next to the hill? It looks, it looks like puddle. sand. It looks like sand. But it's not quite sand. It's some kind of fine powder. Uh, Cocaine. Anyway. <laughs> you enter into what appears to be a small oasis. The walls are painted to depict the vast desert landscape. There's a smiling sun off in the corner. The floor is covered in a substance that appears to be sand. The room is warm, not painfully so, but heat this high is probably unsafe to stay in for an extended period. At the center of the room appears to be a pond of stagnant liquid. A statue hooked up to some sort of machinery, which seems to be piping in liquid in a broken fashion, sputtering out of the statue at random intervals. Uh, two things. One, I'm gonna read the book, and second, you said it looks like sand, but something is off about it? Yeah, it's not quite sand. Uh, Aldrig is gonna scoop some up on his finger and give it a lick. <laughs> it tastes like chicken stock. Ooh, yeah! The book says, The room is hot, but it is safe. The heat means do not linger. The pipes are bringing in nice broth. Try some with your finger. Of well, course, I only did that. The pipes seemingly malfunctioning as the broth is the puddle is stagnant, and the broth is coming in in a staggered manner. Uh, Hanwen also uh, sticks out her little finger and uses it to try a little bit of the, the uh, broth. It tastes all right. It's a little bit stale because it's not coming in and cycling out like it should, but it seems fine. Well, like nice chicken. This is good. You should try it, Ten. Uh, you should try it, Whistle. Maybe, uh, maybe give him some space, Tanwen. Well, those two do that. But I'm Out trying to make gonna... amends. It takes time, dear. Oh shit. The spice? No, wait. The herb it is made from leaves, so it must be a, it's a herb. That's an important rule. I no, just, you, you give him some space and. Maybe he'll come to you when he's ready to talk. Um, okay. Yes, it's a collaborative project. This forgiveness, I understand now. Uh, Blue. Yes. Uh, Alderwick is going to be second to Gilles. Um, whatever oh, this perception. is. And then, oh, perception sec. And I yeah. saw, saw to argue for advantage for investigating things that are machinery. Why would you get advantage for that? No, no, no. Investigation. Investigating things that are machinery, but why would you get advantage for that? No, no, I'm not asking for advantage. I was just asking for investigation instead of for something. Oh. I mean, if you take your time, that's investigation. If you look it over, that's perception. So you're taking your time? 
Yes, Ald- Aldrich will. Uh, okay. I think it's time. S- suppose you can do an investigation while that conversation's happening. Uh, 17. Yep, 17. There is a metal rod jammed in the gears. Looks like it fell off the ceiling. Uh, how zammed is it looking? Uh, it looks like... The gears are still moving, but the rod is jammed in a way to where it's continually stuck between the space and the in the gear teeth. So, but the gears are being slowed down and moving intermittently instead of constant like they should. Um, out of course, how to pull it out. Hey, uh, Wasser, can you help me uh, pull this pipe out real quick? Yeah, sure. When Eldrick points out that a uh, um, something has fallen from the ceiling. Frida will look up and check the ceiling. The ceiling is an interladen mix of pipes running in all directions. They are of varying colors. They are not labeled as such, but you get the feeling that if you want to roll me an insight check, I might be able to tell you something. Okay, what's my... Oh, I got good insight. 16. 16. Yeah, that's good enough. Uh, You get the feeling that this exposed pipe work might be part of where some of the maintenance on the liquids and other things that move throughout the tomb are done. This might be the pipework moving water and spices and things throughout the area. Does it look broken? Like, with that bit that's fallen down, is it is that a problem? There is some steam jutting out where that pipe fell, but nothing else looks damaged. Okay. Russell, maybe when you're done there, you can check out that um, that broken pipe up in the top there. Sure, okay. Uh, given it's both me and Russell trying to get the pipe out, any will need it, or is this automatic success for that? Mm, automatic success. You're both pretty strong. Or at least right. Grandpa is. So, you move the uh, pipe from the gear, and the fountain starts flowing a lot more constantly, like it's more regular. They're, they're not gaps in the liquid anymore, but it is still sputtering out a bit at the statue. Like, maybe something's jammed, but... Hmm. Well, that pipe did fall down. Maybe we should put the pipe back? What, what, what do you think, Frida? You'll uh, cook? I mean, I don't know all that much about machinery and that, but, uh, if there's a piece of pipe that has fallen down, it would make sense if we could try and repair that. It might help. Well, I can't uh, fly, but our friend Russell, you can. Uh, yep. I'll do it for a hand the pipe over to Russell. I'm the best. Thanks. <laughs> I'm gonna All fly right. up and do my best to do some mechanics. Check. A dex check? Sure. Yep. Disadvantage. Shit. Oh, what? I forgot. <laughs> yep. Uh, that is a seven. Oh, no. You take a bit of damage from the hot steam coming out of the ah, pipe. Hot steam! As you go to try and put it back in. You take oh. uh, three fire damage. Can I do a saving throw next time there's an effect I want to avoid? I don't have disadvantage Sorry, on yeah. this. Well. <laughs> I, I figured that's what the check was for, but yeah. Um, you want to roll it a deck save and see if you take the damage? No, it's okay. Way? It's okay. It, it, it's it's happened. That's it's just... No, no, no. It's fine. It's fine. All right. It is all good. So I'm at 20. There we go. Ah! This is where you had that long rest. It... <laughs> yeah. I, I wonder how Wasa feels being so close to this nice, hot... Ah, uh, second stock. Uh, it's right. He's not a chicken. I don't like the sound of what I'm hearing down there. I'm gonna try and uh, sort of jam the pipe into anywhere that looks like it'll, <laughs> it'll fit the pipe. <laughs> I will say the ceiling is close enough that if someone stands on someone's shoulders, someone who probably doesn't have disadvantage and everything might be able to try. Well, disadvantage or not, I should point out I am resistant to. Hear. Injury from heat. Um, I'm probably uh, not the best to help out in this situation given my short stature. What could I be able to tell what the sec might be? It's just put the pipe back in the right spot. 
screw it back on. Out so it's a, it's a dexterity thing. Out of Corpo has told us it's Anwen. Thank you, Noble Paladin. Okay, so what am I rolling here? Dexterity check. See if you can get okay, the pipes just... back in properly. Okay, just a straight dexterity check at disadvantage. Yeah. You, you've seen the, the hot steam, so... Okay, I've I will action. actually ask for a save this time, should you fail. Yes? Uh, so, um... I'm proficient here with dexterity. Would that count as um, something I'm proficient in for the purpose of my, um... class feature? Yes? I, f I forget what it's called, but basically if I'm, um efficient with something, I can um, roll a psionic energy dice to add to it if I fail a check. Uh, sure, go ahead and roll your die. Oh, if you, you fail. Know, first we'll see. Yeah, yeah, if you fail. First we'll see. Yeah, we'll see how this goes first. Oh, what, that's cost me a natural 20. Oh. <laughs> it has. Roll your die. Hey, that's a d6. That's increased it to, um... You got 11 before, yeah? Yep, so that's a 14. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll say that works. I don't want to be here all day trying to fix a pipe. <laughs> okay, cool. That means I've actually used the dice. Well, this is actually the first time I've actually used a dice in the entire campaign. Yep. Yeah. Wow. And as you properly connect the pipe, the steam continues back to where it should, and the statue is now back at full blast, and uh, something shoots out of the statue's mouth and smacks <laughs> into the door. Oh, uh, glad I was standing five foot to the left there. Yeah, careful, Frida. <laughs> What's all this? That's a good idea. You're standing on it, Tanwin. What is it? It's a little soup jug, depicting the visage of a smiling old woman's face. Well, that's handy. We needed some soup. Well, is this like an infinite container of soup or something? <laughs> I'll just go ahead and give you the uh, the ruling for it, since I think that's what magic items do in Nyx World, and you just know they're magic. Yeah, you get a feel for it. Yeah, it's, it's another one of them minor trinkets that doesn't really do anything major. It is called the Soup of the Celestial Nanny. It is at... Well, hold on, let me get the actual wording. A small ceramic jug with a relief of an older woman's smiling face. It weighs one pound, whether full or empty, as an action. A creature can drink from the jug or administer its contents to another creature. The soup inside the jug is always warm and tastes of whatever the creature drinking it associates with a nice home-cooked meal. Drinking the soup cures one disease and ends one of the following conditions. Blindness, deafness, paralysis, or poison. The okay. GM chooses which condition is healed or rolls a d4. It does not heal any condition caused by the loss of a body part. So, not exhaustion. Damn. Hmm. No. If it cured exhaustion, it would be something I would have to step in and say, you can't have. <laughs> because that would be greater yeah. restoration once per day. Yeah, this. Yeah, yeah no, that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's a common item, it's not going to be that powerful. <laughs> yeah. This is an uncommon right. <laughs> item. Uh, it, if it's been written down as common, they've gotten it wrong, because this is casting lesser restoration once a day, basically. Oh. Yeah, sorry, that's my bad. It's listed as common. Yeah, I mean, people, it, the rules mm -hmm. around guidance around listing the items are in the DMG, but I don't think anyone's ever read them. Uh, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, um, Frida is going to scoop up some of the soup from the pool. And, um... Okay. Um, yeah. Just get a bunch of uh, chicken stock. Nice. And. Um, Anybody want to roll me a perception check? Since um, I can try, but I know palms would be good. I'm going to give it a go with disadvantage. Why not? Oh, Same. actually, all right, 17. Uh, 12. Anyone else? 21. Who's 17? Yeah. Nice. Wow. Nice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nice. Okay. Tanwin, you notice that the, uh, the smiling sun over here on the wall... Looks like one of its eyes is like popping out like it might be a button. Hey, uh, Tamwin just sort of yawn, uh, avoids um, Russell's gaze, <laughs> and then her eyes fall on the door. Well, look at this. And the smiling sun just pulls away to reveal a hallway. 
Oh, what's this? Huh. Uh, Good find, I guess. Yes. Don't worry, I'll walk ahead and make sure there are no traps. At the end of this corridor here. At the end of the corridor is a door that looks like it's jammed up with vines and plant matter. Well, this must lead out to the garden, I suppose. There is a small hallway this way. I'm not sure if it's showing up. Yeah, yeah, we can see that. Oh, yeah, we can see it. I I couldn't tell if I left a wall there or not. Yeah, fair enough. I couldn't tell if I left a wall there or not because there's a sticky note in the way. Hmm. Can I see any traps, by the way? No, I don't believe you can. Okay. Your, your passive perception is like 14 or something, was it? Yeah. It'd be five Minus lower than that at the moment. Five. You've got, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So it'll Good be like nine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mine's 10. Well, I've got 13, so I guess I can go ahead. And the door opens. I, I thought, sorry. I, it looks like I put multiple walls here and I Ooh. fucked it up. Oh, hey, okay. let's have a rest. Uh, let's yes. read the poem. thing before anybody touches anything. I'll read the poem this time. I can read. With disadvantage. <laughs> what does <laughs> this word mean? It's like garlic. <laughs> <laughs> you just found the room. You're finding yourself free reading each line again. Uh, yeah. You found the room. Congratulations. I bet you think you're clever. Take the win. Enjoy the loot. It's a fork that looks like a feather. There's two chests. So there's two chests. Feather pork? That sounds like your sort of thing, Russell. What could yeah. that possibly mean? Uh, can I hear it again? You found the room. Congratulations. I bet you think you're clever. Take the win. Enjoy the loot. It's a fork that looks like a feather. Uh, is gonna look at the sass. See if there's anything different between the two. Roll me an investigation check. Uh, can okay. Tamwen check the uh, chest for traps? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Okay, what do you want at disadvantage? Oh, yeah. Uh, I think it's investigation. Uh, that is a three. That's a three. Yeah, it looks like a chest. Oh, no. Uh, that's 15. Yeah, this chest is trapped. What? Watch out. These chests are trapped. Ah! One chest is trapped. <laughs> I thought you didn't trust me anymore, Russell. Shut up. This chest <laughs> is trapped. Okay. Okay, I'll try back. and disarm it. And she's very How good, good to very sleepily and clumsily pull out her thieves tools. I'm going to step um, out here and close the door. Frida will give yeah, you that... a bardic inspiration to do this. Like, um, just uh, take it easy. Concentrate. Just go in gently. You know what you're doing. You're going to be okay. <laughs> Sorry. Sentences <laughs> were also said on <laughs> Frida's first time with Aegis. Oh. <laughs> Nick. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you go to disable the trap. That's a 10. Uh, what is a bardic inspiration dice? Uh, D6. Okay. Okay, so that's a d6. That brings it up to 12, and I'm proficient that's with these so I can roll a d6. Um, okay, um... 15. With this, uh, wait, 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 uh... Creature can roll... Uh, you can roll the Bardic Inspiration die again, and choose which roll to use. Okay. Because this well, is it's at 15 check. right now. Yeah, it's at 15 now, higher. what's it's worth. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, okay. you, this you is something well that is it, anyway. Just to see. You, oh, yeah. You, yeah, a six. Oh, yeah. So. That's true. Nope. Oh, yeah, okay. the two 15. was gonna, not going to get better yeah. than the two then. Yeah. So it's 15. 15. Yeah, so you, you go to slip your thieves' tools under the chest. You spy a small wire connecting the upper and lower halves of the chest, and you snap it. And oh, wow. nothing happens. Meanwhile, out here, it's just fire. <laughs> <laughs> can, can anybody now get some chicken? <laughs> mm, they can have okay. inspiration for that. They can use me. <laughs> okay. What, what's and when you're going to gingerly uh, open the chest, then. Okay, so you open the chest, and there's nothing in it. Secondary trap. <laughs> 
Uh, Eldrick will open the other chest. So Eldrick opens Wait. the other chest. Nope. Too it's late. Here. Too late. Too late. It's not trapped. You find inside a fork that looks like a feather. It is stuck in a large cinder block. Interesting. Uh, Eldrick picks up the cinder block and looks at the spoon. Now the cinder block it, it is the entire size of the chest. It would weigh several hundred pounds. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Now, Eldrick was strong, but I don't think he's that strong. Um, so what do you do? Okay. Uh, Frida will step up and uh, take out the potion she got earlier. And um, say, I, I think maybe I might be able to do something about this. Oh. And she pours on the I uh, I don't I never wrote down what the actual name is I've got it written down on my sheet as the eat anything Blood potion syrup. <laughs> it is 10 pounds or less is is this would eating this 10 cinder pounds of this cinder box allow us to get the um the feather out the, the fork feather I mean I'm gonna say it's I don't know it said a substance weighing 10 pounds or less so would you will would it be able to just partially affect something, or is it an all or nothing deal? The, the, the original potion doesn't say. I guess it would be a uh, DM rule in, in this case. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna I say, think... in I'm gonna say in this case, it works, but not for the reason you think it does. Ooh, the entire cinder block becomes edible. Oh, and tastes like a donut. Oh, this is eat. delicious. Everyone, uh, get in on this. I don't have to eat a donut. <laughs> uh, he also yeah, starts to get when grabs a uh, chunk of it and tries some. How's uh, the cinder block taste? Like a donut, prison. Yeah, like a donut. All right, so uh, you go to a lift the donut? fork, and it's still stuck in a big chunk of the cinder block. Which, surprisingly, the cinder block lifts out with the fork as if it weighs almost nothing. You hear a knock on the door. Shout it. Are you all dead? We have a a giant donut! donut. Big donut brick. A donut? I'm in. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe it'll help with your hangover, Russell. Uh, Um. I'll I'll decide to uh, pull the the fork out of the uh, cinder block. Even if he has to and you, eat toe around it. And you do so, and it's the second the fork leaves the cinder block, that cinder block returns to weighing several hundred pounds and falls back in the chest with a thud. Uh, is it still a donut? Yeah, no, it's still a donut because of a <laughs> fucking loophole. But still. <laughs> uh, uh, t- Tamwen sort of um, bites at it as it's falling. <laughs> Wow, you that's an amazing, amazing implement. It seems like it made that big brick weigh nearly nothing. Let me try something. Uh, Aldrich is going to stab the fork into the donut and try to lift it back up. It returns to weighing almost nothing. Useful. This might make us able to move that uh, large boulder out of the way when we're trying to leave later. Maybe. I want to try something, but we don't have an enemy around. Enemy? <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, hey, uh, yeah, what, do you want to take some bludgeoning damage? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I've sent you the magic text for the fork. <laughs> okay. There you go. You, what you have is Galena's Fork of Lifting. Another one of the magical weird trinkets from the book. Huh. That is... That could be pretty useful, actually. It mechanically only affects one object. And, like, say you put it on a cart. It would reduce the cart's weight by a bunch. But nothing in the cart. Everything else would stay the same weight. Hmm. And, by the way, that trap was another uh, deadly fire trap. So, had you not gotten that 15... A lot of people might have gone down. So glad I stepped out of that room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, Your box finally used these cyanic energy dice. <laughs> well, 
Alderwick is going to bring the donut with him. Mm -hmm. Let me let me show you the uh, art for the fork, since I drew it. Thank you. Oh, that looks cool. Oh, uh, that's rad. Oh, I like that. Your your little magic item tokens are pretty cool, man. Enjoy them. Yeah, I, I'm 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 using the book art for reference, but yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, right. that's why it will, cause it because the um the cinder block was one pound. Yeah, it reduces the weight of anything up to 200 pounds down to one pound. Oh. The question is, and how heavy is that ball? Yeah. Uh, I actually had somebody ran the math on a 15-foot uh, diameter boulder, and it weighs just short of 200 tons. Okay. Mm. That's a heavy boulder. Mm. A size right. of a small boulder. <laughs> so what you're saying is that it's... Definitely more than uh, two hundred pounds. Yeah. The fork requires a tuner. Break it up a bit. Well, you know what? Alduk is most definitely gonna attune to this fork. Cool. All right. Should we um? Should we maybe call it a night there? Because we are now at uh, I... eleven o'clock. I yeah, think. I'm not sure what's going on with Depend... my. Uh live when you should end thing <laughs> but it's still like it's still yeah, like it's... nah i'm good <laughs> i don't know why yeah look I'm, I'm gonna say this depending on how the next room starts off we can either finish it or end here might you be mean, a good idea to end you... here is 11. yeah fair enough hmm it's cool uh... okay. yeah this was fun Thank you. Yeah. And what a, uh, yep. what a I fantastic enjoyed... set of encounters. That fight. I, I, Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Mm. That was I was not expecting the scene with Ashton but that was great. Oh, that was great. Yeah, well. I mean, yeah, he, yeah. he said, see you soon. Mm, <laughs> I didn't realize it would be that soon. Yeah, that was that was fantastic. Really, really well run. Yeah, thank you so much. All right. I will. I will take us over to the outro screen and uh, mute you all. Thank you all for playing with me as well and again, thank you Mr. Blue for running this. This has been absolutely fantastic. Yay! Thanks. <laughs> Good session, everyone. Night all. Night Bye, everybody. Goodbye. Alright, everyone. Let's go to the outro screen. Say goodbye to you. Thank you for watching. This has been really good fun. Mr. Blue's a great DM and uh, runs a fantastic session. I mean that um, that Ashmedai encounter was mm -hmm, that was great. I was as I said, I was beaming from it. It was, it was so well made. Um, we've got no stream tomorrow. Oh no, we do have a stream tomorrow. We have got a stream tomorrow. It is um, uh, midday, so noon BST. It is going to be the return of John Boulder and Joy Men's of Branson. So that's me and Rizalka playing through Baldur's Gate. We are currently exploring Shah's Bottom. Uh, and yes, that's that's the name I'm going with for that. <laughs> Huge thank you to everyone who supports uh, all of these uh, tabletop games. Their names are coming up on the top left. You can get your name here at ko-fi.com for slash his cursedness. So a huge thank you to Ben Newman, Supertalia DX, Al Wyvern, Icky Foo, Catbat, Neo Gets, 8-Bit Goggles, Craig Perko, Summer B. And thank you to all for watching this. I hope you all have a wonderful uh, evening and a wonderful weekend. See you all soon, I'm sure. Good night.